Hello, this is Mike Lanier, and I'm normally from the Let's Roll podcast, but we're doing something a little different today. Uh, we're doing the Car Owner Virus Revisited, which we did one, I think it was March. Me and Jeff had done one, uh, Car Owner Virus. And now I like that, yeah. This is our second one, and uh, I got my co-host Jeff Thisted here. Hey, He's guys. from the Let's Roll podcast, and it's going to be powered by carshownationals.com. We're going to be changing that, so... Uh, we're going to be exciting. updating the website and building a new one, so that's right all on. coming up. But, uh, yeah, this is what we do. We're going to have, I think we're close to 40 people now that are going to be joining, and we're going to just kind of do it by time slots if we could do that. I'm going to have to mic, uh, uh, silence some mics because last time we had a lot of noise in the background. So if your mic is silenced, it might be on more toward the time you're going to be on. And then at the end of the podcast, we're going to have a free-for-all or everyone's mics will be on or whatever. <laughs> so Jeff, you hosted the, the debate? I didn't realize that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it might be like a debate. I don't know. We'll see. Uh, but we'll see how it goes. It's just uh, you never know. It's live and on Facebook Live right now. And uh, we'll see what happens. What do you got to say, Jeff? We got uh, state senator uh, or national senator Sherilyn Westrich is here from uh, the senator from overall. All right. She just right. showed up. I see uh, McKinley showed up. Uh, yeah. yeah. Oh, we got there's the Hulk Camino. Hulk Camino right, right there. Yeah. Hulk Camino. Good stuff. That's awesome. That too. Yeah, right. again, now I got volume. Hi. Yeah, I'm, I'm kind of cutting off volume until we get close to the people coming up because otherwise no, it gets crazy. I need crazy. full volume at all times. That's true. <laughs> there you go. Well, we'll start off with Kevin Osti from SEMA 360 this year and the SEMA spokesperson. And tell How's us what's going, going on. Good. How are you, Kevin? Where are you? Where are you? Uh, whereabouts are you right now? Uh, right now, I am just walking around in our our own shop. So. Uh, oh, well, where is that? Is that Massachusetts? Is it Cambodia? Is it Kansas City? Where are you at, Kevin? <laughs> it is. Don't hide Cambodia. from the people. Yeah. Where? Uh, we're in Lower Cambodia. <laughs> lower Cambodia, it's, uh, yeah. Upper Cambodia to me is is very exclusive. I like lower. It's much more uh, low class, like I am. More yes. car friendly. Way more car uh, friendly. No, uh, we own the uh, V8 Speed and Resto Shop in the little tiny town of Redbud, Illinois. So we are oh. in the s southern part of Illinois near St. Louis, and a stone's throw away from uh, one of your upcoming guests, Mr. Mike Cotton. So it's ah uh, uh, yes, he's a fan not. of a sort of East St. Louis. Yeah. <laughs> well. We tend to stay kind of local to uh, to our little stomping grounds. Uh, I'm originally from Chicago and spent a bunch of time in L.A. working for car magazines and ended up here, which has been, uh, for us, has been a, a great thing to do. So uh, I'm just meandering about the shop, but you mentioned SEMA 360. I'm also here uh, recording some intro videos for the SEMA 360 platform right now. So I got to, your timing was perfect on this because we just, finished shooting a video a few minutes ago that uh, Ben, our editor, is cutting. And then uh, when we jump off this call, we're shooting one more that is going to be going out at uh, 7 or 6 a.m. Pacific tomorrow morning. So whereas, um, <clears throat> excuse me, there's no, you know, there's no SEMA show. We all know that. Uh, I'm fortunate that I'm still getting the opportunity to work during SEMA week. Um, and well, the SEMA kind of show, show will take place right here, right here in my heart. This year, that's right. where it's going to be. That's where it's going to be. Can you give us a, a little preview of what you've got going on back there, Kev? Uh, as far as 360 or here in the shop? Both. I mean, your your choice. All right. Well, <laughs> I'll, I'll ping pong. So right behind me is a, uh, a a car with a personality disorder. Is what I'm going to say. This is a uh, a GTX by Badge, but it was uh, born as a satellite and it was cloned into a GTX. It's a small block car automatic, but the uh, the owner wants to re-identify the car again into a Superbird. So we're going to be doing the wing and the nose and all that kind of stuff and changing the motor and all that jazz. Wait, so, so it's not going to stay small block? And by small block, you mean 383? No, it's a 360, so it's an actual. It is 360, okay. Yeah, it's a, an LA series. Um, I mean, he's talking Hellcrate possibly. We'll see, <laughs> you know, how, how things go. Uh, through the project, that'd be wonderful. Um, or maybe a, an original style 426 Hemi, that'd be cool too. Um, up for all that kind of stuff. Let's and, see, the hell uh, the hell crate is is kind of cool because they're they're expensive and you can't find them right now. But the the 426s, that's ah, uh, that's a holy grail, man. 
It is. Right. Um, right. I mean, it, you can't argue with either one of those choices. So, so that's pretty cool. Um, and then we got all kinds of different stuff. Uh, there's a, uh, a NASCAR for the street, 73 charger back there. That's uh, also 360 powered, but it's got, you know, it's got it. It's signed by King Richard. It's got uh, full NASCAR suspension in it, but it's street legal and he drives it around. That's kind of fun. Up to a uh, 47 Willys Jeepster behind me, you know, over here, which uh, just needed the valves adjusted to be put back together. And then uh, over my shoulder this way is a pair of 69 Camaros. One is basically stock appearing. The other is not. Uh, this one is uh, 950 horsepower twin turbo LS. The other one is uh, an EFI 396 that looks kind of stock with a four speed. So lots of fun stuff going on. There's Fords here too. And trans ams and all kinds of other stuff so we uh we're all inclusive in the in the love of cars trucks and muscle cars here nice. very nice yeah so oh. on the sema 360 side uh you're gonna see a lot of pretty cool stuff they did a really great job of still keeping some of the dna of the sema show alive so usually the show kicks off tuesday morning with the new products awards ceremony and awards breakfast um this year, that uh, new products award ceremony is still going to happen. It's just going to happen on 360, so that's cool. There was something like 2,200 products that were uh, presented, so a lot of different stuff going on there. And uh, I think 330 feature vehicles will be on display through the, the SEMA 360 platform, in addition to all the different seminars and, and networking opportunities, so that you can still get stuff for your business or your shop um, through the SEMA experience, even though you get to do it from the comfort of your own chair. And so Jeff, can you explain to the folks at home? Fans. Yeah, explain to the folks at home, Kevin, how this how SEMA 360 works. You still have to be registered like a, like the regular SEMA show. Um, but now, like you like you, you just said, you just sit at home on your sofa in your underpants. Right. So <laughs> the main thing is SEMA 360 is still an automotive trade event. So it's not open to the general public, but they have um, different tabs on the website that have different functionality. And one of them, like I said, is the new product section, and they've got featured manufacturers there as well. So what you do as a member of the industry is go to the SEMA manufacturer tab and then pick who you want to learn about, see their new stuff through photos or videos or whatnot, do your business. Now, if you're media like you guys, you're free to grab those images, uh, press releases, and uh, videos and share them in your own automotive media outlets. So you can be getting this stuff to, to your enthusiast fans even faster than the traditional SEMA show. So nice. that should be pretty cool. Pretty cool. Yeah. We're going to miss you at SEMA, though. It's still not the same without seeing in person, but... <laughs> yeah, I'm going to be seeing you guys, too. Mike, yeah. you and I always have a, a minute or two at the SEMA reveal on Monday night. Right, right. It's, it's always a lot of fun, but I, I definitely <laughs> miss, like all of us, we all miss seeing each other. And, and yeah. it's, uh, it's about 100%. It. Anything that you're looking forward to that you can uh, you can tell us about? Um, I can tell you that they did a really good job of developing – the SEMA 360 experience, and especially with the pieces that I've been involved with, which is some hosting videos and things like that. Um, the SEMA banquet is gonna occur again uh, on the platform, and it, it looks pretty cool, the technology that, we, we actually shot those in Burbank at a, a zillion dollar studio. Um, it, it's, it's neat, you know, it's not just a week long Zoom meeting by any stretch. And so, uh, right. you know, it's worth checking out for sure. All right, sounds good. That's awesome. Well, right on, guys. Awesome. Thank you for coming on. We're already at uh, almost 512. I've got to watch the time here. Yeah, Man. totally. Uh, I really, I really appreciate you guys asking me to uh, to be with you on this and help kick this off. I know yeah. you're going to have a great show. I got one more video to shoot tonight, and I'm going to be watching the whole thing. So thanks again. All right. uh, and to everybody online, uh, thank you, and uh, peace and love and automotive yeah. prosperity. We'll see you soon. Well, thanks for thanks joining so us, much, Kevin. Kevin. It, Funny enough, as Kevin was talking, I just got an email uh, notification to sign in for my SEMA 360. Oh, there, about, you uh, there you go. See, we'll see you, Kevin. Right I did that key. with my mind. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you can stop back later tonight if you're, you know, we're going to have a free-for-all later. About you know five hours. Free -for -all. Four, four and a half hours. 
Well, one thing though, I'd recommend, you know, sending out hot meals to everyone who's watching the banquet. That'd be kind of cool. <laughs> yeah, there you go. That'd be awesome. <laughs> All right, guys. All right. See you. Have a good night. You too. Well, I don't know if I've seen Joe Coddington on here anywhere or uh, Mike Curtis. I haven't, I haven't seen them yet. They were going to try to be on because they wanted to be on with Cheryl Lynn. I know that. Well, let's be honest. Who doesn't want to be on with Cheryl Lynn? I know. Maybe they're having problems logging in or... Or, I like uh, the way you guys. I like the way you talk. <laughs> you know, I, 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 I like your bangs. Yes. Cotton says I need a haircut. I don't think I need a haircut, but I do like your bangs. You Girl, do. Yeah. Thank you. You should get yeah. the same thing. I think you would look good like this with a little. <laughs> like Bruce Dickinson from Iron Maiden. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I just have the wave going on. Oh, so, we have. Uh... So where's Joe Coddington? Well, she was. I, you know. I don't know if I, I bet Here's you what I, I have. Her I have a controller device. I'm going to text her. Text her and say, hey, come on. Because I was actually supposed to remind her now I think about it. <laughs> and I don't think I reminded her. You know how many messages I've been getting the last few days? It's a lot. been a little crazy. Yeah. So, yeah, Joe Connington, uh, Mike Curtis was excited to talk to you, but I don't know. We'll see if they show up. If not, it might be I'm later. Texting. <laughs> how'd, how'd the election go? It's on November 4th. You, you're not going to vote? Oh, yeah, a couple of days away. That's right. Yeah. It's, I keep on forgetting. Yeah. Everybody's uh, vote. Yeah, this whole voting yeah, thing. It's I Tuesday. Finally... Tuesday. Yep. Tuesday. I'll, be, uh, I'll be on my way to Colorado on Tuesday. Huh. Well, you better vote. I already did. Yeah. There's, there's Will checking in. Hi, Will. There's, there's Will. Somebody's... Nice. Will, Frank, Ben. Yeah. Hey. Oh. Okay. Cotton wing patiently. Someone's getting that a notification. Be, that must be Cheryl Lynn. No, I'm muting it. <laughs> we can hear the vibration. But what are you doing now? Other than you're running, well, you know that you're running, but what are you doing right now with, with COVID still? We just had you on not too long ago. But. Yeah. Well, so I started a new company called Malwood USA. Malwood USA. And it's a hydraulic underdash system. There it is. It's a hydraulic underdash pedal. And so what it does is if you have the old cable cable clutch system, this will turn it into a new modern hydraulic system. And so I'm manufacturing these, and uh, that's what I'm doing. Where can we find them? Uh, MalwoodUSA.com. Got to add that USA. MalwoodUSA. Dot com. They're all made. I make them in Iowa, so they're go. USA made. And if uh, you order one during the Car Show Nationals podcast, uh, Sherilyn will sign it for you. That's yeah. right. That's yeah. right. I will sign your pedal, and that way you look really sloppy. <laughs> <laughs> now, when we had Sherilyn on before, she said one of her best friends from Overhaul was Ben Bright. Just happened you, to be friends with him, and he's yeah. here tonight. And uh, so there's Ben. Best guy on the show. Best guy. There he is. So how do you guys know each other besides overhauling? Well, oh, there we, we go. That's became, how I unmuted. it. We became oh, friends you. through overhauling. You did okay. And um, it might have been on the screen. Can you guys see me? Yeah, I oh. see you. Um, <laughs> yeah, so we just became uh, friends from working 19 hours a day together. And uh, I was telling them that he and I were, for a long time, we were the only ones who lived in the hotel there by the set. So yeah. everybody else would get to go home to their families and their wives. And me and, and you guys would go down to the hotel bar. That's right. right. And Sometimes. commiserate, right? Yeah. Yeah. But they couldn't be late. To they the couldn't be working. Yeah, they couldn't be late the next morning, remember? They get in trouble. Exactly. You got to be there by 9 a.m. or you're done. Unless you happen to be a bodybuilder and you have to go to the gym, then you get excused. Really? <laughs> <laughs> Who got excused well, for working out? Just the dirt. I'm saying, I'm not, you'll have to ask other people. <laughs> ben knows. That's a, that's a little private joke for Ben. <laughs> so, Ben, do you have a shop then? Or is that uh, your own shop? Or are you working for someone else? Or not sure. <clears throat> no, I, I started up my own shop like six years ago. Okay. After 
so many years on overhauling. Like my wife was pregnant during our fifth season and I was pretty much gone for her whole pregnancy. And um, I just wanted to be home for dinner with my wife and kids eventually, you know? And uh, so I started up my own shop called Old Soul Speed and Custom. Uh, we just moved again in March uh, into a bigger building and expanded to doing service and maintenance on classic cars as well as full builds. So okay. saw, saw a need for it based on some of the things that we were fixing that were coming in. So I'm like, well, let's just make it available that we'll do this the first time around and you know, do it once and do it right for the customers. So, so and since you were in a hotel for overhauling, uh, my guess is that your shop is not in Southern California. No, I'm in Central California, uh, San Luis Obispo. Oh, very nice. That's all okay. Called Cayucas. I just oh. I just got back from the beach a couple minutes ago with my wife and kids. Oh, really <laughs> rough. Sorry, guys. And I find how's the weather in a Cayucas? It's about 74, 75 degrees a day. It's sunny. Nice. One of my favorite places there is the uh, Boradori Garage. Yeah, we just took family pictures there last Sunday. See, you got to get pictures there. It's this yeah. this delinquent garage that in the Pacific Ocean in the background with the cove. Oh, it's gorgeous. Yeah, nice. yeah it's being used for a storage facility for Cayucas wine cellars right now. So I'm trying to get in good with the family so I can move. <laughs> I said, I told after the last move, I told my wife, I'm not moving again until it's into Cayucas. We can see that. I mean, I can see that shop from our house. So. Oh, can you really? Nice. Yeah. What's his yeah. name? Didn't uh, uh, Don Spencer? He used to have a, a shop there. Yep. Yeah. He, actually, his old shop just got rented out right before we. I went on my own, and I was really bummed out because I would have rented it, but they turned it into another antique shop because that's what we need in Cayucas is another one of those. <laughs> uh, you should have kept yeah, that a hot rod shop. Yeah, Don Spencer's shop is it's still here. Not much has changed. Uh, um, his daughter still uh, lives in town here. I know her and her husband pretty well. They live in in Denver, and then they come here during the winters. So well, I never how, had a chance to meet him personally. How many seasons were you on overhauling, Ben? Uh, the first build I did was during the first season. And okay. the last build I did was a couple months ago on the 10th season. So okay. I, uh, after I, I didn't go back and do the sixth and seventh season, I was building um, cars at a shop, doing concourse restorations on Mercedes Goldwings and 300 SL Roadsters. Um, so I did that for a number of years. And then I, uh, Chip called and asked me to come back down. I did the most of the eighth and ninth season. And then uh didn't want to do the tenth season since they were mostly modern cars and went back down to help on the Shaquille O'Neal build uh that sixty four Impala convertible. Sherilyn sure. was saying that that was one of her favorite builds, the the Shaq build. Yeah, it was yeah. Fun. yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it was fun to get get a lot of the old team back together. Um the show was great, but it definitely it changed a lot over the years as uh, Discovery Network took over and things like that, uh, and other production like executive producers took over and stuff. It 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 kind of lost its uh, original flavor, I guess you could say. When yeah. it went from seven seven days to three weeks, um, it wasn't the same. A lot of people who had never helped out on the seven day builds didn't really understand like. Well, three weeks is a long time, but there's still a uh, like a sense of urgency that needs to be done to get to get the job done, and you know, in the amount of time that we had. So it was way different back in the in you know the I started in season three, and that was when it was a seven day build, and so it was just uh, I don't know I think that built more of a camaraderie and like a team spirit, you know, and. You know, it's hard. You're working 19-hour days. You know, now you'll work maybe a 10-hour, 12-hour day. It's just not that same feeling of really, you know, I don't know. There was just something about it back then. Yeah. Well, so you don't think it's, it hasn't changed for the best? Well, you know, I'm the same as Ben when it comes to building new cars. It's just a whole, it's a different animal. And I, I it, it's a learning curve for me that, you know, I mean, the 
of course it's, it's a, just a car like you know but still it's just different i, I like metal work and and um so it, it's just different and you know and it's a little more relaxed because it's more like a normal hours you know a normal build hour just it's not exactly nine to five but eh, kind of you know yeah, yeah. Well, very just good like the classic cars obviously yeah. more yeah yeah for sure thicker metal well Sherilyn, we find your uh your hydraulic accessories at malwoodusa.com yeah uh, and ben where's it where, where can the folks at home find uh find your website uh my my shop's called old soul speed and custom and they've got a website called old soul speed that i never do anything on um <laughs> but uh, <laughs> uh same thing same, instagram same thing facebook with, um, where can they find you uh well facebook and instagram it's old soul speed and custom but i haven't really been very active on those uh like once the whole coronavirus thing hit and i had a lot of friends that were out of work i we we actually had just expanded and became busier than ever but i i kind of stopped posting things i knew some people had fallen on hard times so um, one of these days I'll get back into it. I, I can't say that I've missed not having the uh, You can't the stop daily posting demand. things because people have fallen on hard times, Ben. Because yeah, people fallen on hard to times, you gotta at. keep posting. Yeah. Yeah. Entertain the people <laughs> who are sitting home. That's it. That's it. Yeah. We need to be entertained. Yeah. But thanks for coming on, you guys. So, Looking forward to seeing season eleven. Yeah. Good to see you, Jeff. Yeah. Good to see you, Mike. We'll see. We'll yeah. see if that happens. I, all right. Thank you for fingers crossed. Thank you guys. Right. Thank you guys. Thanks. Yeah, we'll see ya. Uh, well, Will is supposed to be on next, and I think we just lost Will, but Frank no, is here. here. Oh, there no, I'm here. He's here. He shows camera. We got Frank here. Who uh, tell us what you do, Frank, and uh, how you are, where you're working. Can you hear me? Yeah, we can hear you. We're good. All right, cool. Well, uh, yeah, I'm Frank Finelli. I just started working here at Condigit back in March. Uh, had a really cool opportunity that came my way through, kind of through Instagram, actually. I'd just been building cars on my own in my free time, and I had someone reach out to me to say, hey, do you want to try out for this show called Vision Bootcamp? And I hadn't even heard of it. I didn't even know it existed. And uh, uh, I'm not cut out for I'm not even going to make, you know, even, I'm not even going to be looked at for this thing. I made a trial video for it. and. The next thing I knew, I was flying to Salt Lake City and came to try it for the show. I figured, all right, I'll make it an episode and I can laugh about it with my grandkids someday. And the next thing I knew, however many challenges later, the show was over and I wound up winning the thing. So the, the prize for the show was getting a job at Connecticut Design and went back home, finished putting my house together for a month and got some stuff in my Mustang and drove across country. And here I am working, uh, working at Connecticut and it's really freaking cool. Now, I, I hope with your Mustang, did you put on off-road suspension? Because in my experience, the roads in Salt Lake City are like the Ho Chi Minh Trail or the Baja 1000, the worst roads in the United States, Salt Lake City. Am I wrong? The no. roads actually aren't good. Not, they don't have potholes like we do in New York, but they do have really deep transitions getting into parking lots. Oh. I fit every tool I owned in that car and every bit of clothes I had, so it was sitting pretty low, and I caught a, a terrible snowstorm in Wyoming coming across country. This is like the end of February, beginning of March. So it was, it made for a fun time, <laughs> but uh, yeah, I made it. How many cars have you brought from New York City, Frank? Uh, I've brought four. My most recent road trip, I took my girlfriend. We flew back from here to New York. I've got a house up near Rochester where I've got the rest of my cars. And I've got four remaining and I've road tripped my the Mustang, a 67 Coronet 500. Um, I had a, a budget truck with my 69 Roadrunner on the trailer, so partial road trip. And then this one, I took my 66 Buick Wildcat, and we just drove four days across country, no issues. It was really freaking cool. Buicks, Mopars, and Fords, listen to you, completely agnostic. I know. I'm all over the place. I love a little bit of everything. That's good. Thank you. Well, a certain person named Will Lockwood said you're just kicking butt, so. Yeah. Well, thank you, Will. Yeah, Frank's kicking butt. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Right. You said, what? I don't even think you said kicking butt. You said doing something. You're doing uh -huh. great. <laughs> but well, uh, well, we thought Kev Dog was going to be on tonight, but apparently he's doing something, like on a build or something, but he might 
join. He's not eating. It was Halloween last night. He's got candy eater. You kidding? Yeah. I went in to put in a few like, overtime today. We're we're getting a, a we're getting a vehicle ready for a finishing part of it. So that's probably yeah, what he's a, still doing. He sees yeah. he's probably gonna be with me. But. I told him, oh, he's, he's gonna come on, and then then after I started posting, oh, he's got a project he's still doing. I'm like, oh, what is it? <laughs> but uh, but we'll yeah, working on a Sunday. Working on a Sunday. That's it. So. Uh, we would have all been at SEMA, I'm sure. Were you going to be going to SEMA too, Frank? Yeah, I was definitely looking forward to yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. So, man, that makes it rough, but, you know, this is yeah. this makes up for a little bit, but this is a small we'll part. Right here. <laughs> What's that? Uh, what do you got behind you there, Will? Oh, um, this is my 74 Ford. It's a, it's a big project. Um, it's probably been... That's not a Mustang. Not no, a it's not a Mustang. No, it's a it's a full size high boy four door. It's got a ninety three. Come on! Oh, I was gonna say it was a Bronco. That's a four door. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's a four door. Is it gonna be a pre runner? Uh, it's pre runner style. I call it. Uh, it's kind of like a more of a mountain truck. It's still got a big Dana sixty in the front, but uh, big long travel. People ask me what I'm going to do with it. I just tell them I'm going to haul dirt really fast, you know. <laughs> it's supposed to do everything. It's supposed to do everything. We'll see if it does. It's it's running really well right now, uh, but obviously not the the doors aren't hung all on it and stuff yet. So so we're getting there. Super tough. When can we expect to see it on the road? Well, you can see it on the on the road around my neighborhood. <laughs> really? Okay. Uh, Anytime. I like to take it out and make a big bunch of noise with it. It's got some 39-inch uh, BFGs on it, and bam, they howl. They howl, and they're noisy. And I go out and make a bunch of noise, and my wife says, oh, God, I'm just so embarrassed. <laughs> <laughs> and it makes but, you very happy. And it's, you said it's, what, it's got a 360 in it? It has a 4.6 with a supercharger. Uh, it it's basically has a whole 93 Lincoln in it. I really wanted something modern uh power uh and when i stumbled upon the whole four valve head engines i just was like yeah it's a ford and we can put that in my ford and and uh, i found i found uh, one of the lincoln cars and basically put the whole car in this truck all the electronics all the all the the whole dashes in there and um it was a divorce transfer case truck so you basically just chop down a, a drive shaft and, and hook up the engine and transmission and and there you go i was i was heading around the block all of a sudden so it worked out <laughs> and then of course oh, yeah, i tore it all down and did ten thousand other things to it so so that's kind of been the whole pre-runner thing the big shocks the um the supercharger and you know that just turns into a whole big old spiraling snowball but it's not going to be a, a, a legit pre-runner with communication systems and uh, and navigation. It, it's a, still a street truck, but just a badass street truck. Yeah, badass street truck. And I was thinking, you know, probably ultimately it'd probably be like a support truck, not necessarily yeah. pre-running and and going race speeds, but 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 chasing some people up and helping them out and you know. That's awesome. Just, doing, just out having fun. Very cool. Well, next time yeah. I haven't I haven't been out to the shop, so next time I come out for a, for good guys in Salt Lake, I'll have to head by the shop and I want to check this uh, check out that rig. Oh yeah, totally. Yeah, totally. Hopefully uh, by the time good guys rolls around this uh, next year, it'll be out and and we'll have tons of miles on it and have a lot of fun. We can take nice. everybody for rides. Four doors. Nice. Four drive on those streets with drive on those streets with Jeff. You know. Diesel Dave, he's got, he drives out there too. And yeah. You need big trucks to drive out there. <laughs> big trucks are fun. Big trucks are fun. You don't have to worry about curbs. You know, you can you can go places you need to go. And and I just fell in love with them a long time ago. I love playing in the dirt. Don't have to right. worry about curbs or potholes. Curbs or potholes or or um, center dividers. I always like exactly. to jump center dividers. Or if you yeah. got anybody in a mini truck, you can run those mini trucks right over. Yeah. <laughs> and no reaction from the mini truck guy. 
He's asleep, right? <laughs> Shake his head. Keep on shaking that head. <laughs> uh, I know who you're ripping on now. Yeah, you do. <laughs> yeah, well, well, thanks so much have, for coming on, you guys. We have Frank on here, me. and uh, he knows someone else that was on the same show. And she's on hey, right now, too. Hey, Jamie. Hey. So, uh, McKinley is supposed to be on, too, but who knows? Some of these people are probably, I don't know if they're... Some of them might not be figuring out how to log on, but uh, some of these people are invited by Tori, and I don't have everyone's email, so I can't communicate with everyone. So I think we're having some people not coming on because of that, but we'll see. This is, uh, it's, it's live, Facebook, and uh, live here, and we're recording this also, so. So Jamie, uh, you are, uh, you look like you're a pretty darn good worker on the show, I'll tell you. And uh, I watched, you know, I haven't been able to watch everything because it was on the phone app. But uh, from what I've seen, you know, you're doing some good stuff with your brother, too. So we should have had your brother on. I don't know why. Uh, I think. Yeah, I don't Tori... know why we're having you on, Jamie. We should have had on your brother. Oh, oh yeah. Cool. He's a slice. Well, <laughs> well, well Tori invited Jamie, so. He didn't yeah. invite her brother. We could have had them both on, but he invited yeah. Jamie because he knows Jamie, obviously. Uh, know. Tori's here somewhere. He's not online right now, but of course not. No, but he's gonna be on later with Lou San is. Santiago. So, well, tell us about tell us about yourself, Jamie. Well, I've been in cars since I was a small child. My dad was a body and frame man, um, so growing up, I learned body work. I could paint a car when I was 13. Um, at age 17, my dad threw a book at me and said, build this 700 R4 and you'll save our company a lot of money. First transmission I built worked. So I've been building transmissions for over 22 years. I'm nice. more of a gearhead than a fabricator. Um, and I told him that before I went out on the show, I'm not the best welder. I can weld, right but I'm not the best. And mm -hmm. uh, I went on anyway. So I think I, I, I did pretty well. I've been in... Uh, a lot of show circuits over the years, mostly low rider back in the 90s, early 2000s. I had a show car that I brought out to LA, Las Vegas Super Shows. I uh, was involved with SEMA in the late 90s. I worked for a couple companies there. Um, so I've been in the car scene a long, long time. I own co-own with my sister an automotive repair shop. So we're not doing body and paint. We're doing just fixing regular cars day to day. Um, women. Well, there's a McKinley. <laughs> yeah. Um, so Bye. has your shop been, you've been, obviously everyone's shops seem like they're pretty busy at the moment, so you're not seeing anything negative on the COVID end of it, correct? No, not in automotive repair. We've been yeah. pretty decent. Being in the Chicagoland area too, I mean, we got a heavy population, so we're doing okay. Yeah, that's good to see. Yeah. Well, we could have, we could have seen y'all at SEMA if you're going to be there too, but, uh, here we are. <laughs> oh, I would have loved to have seen everybody else from boot camp. We had such a great time together. We were such a good team, right, Frank? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it was. It was a great time. And McKinley is also on the show, so she's getting on at the right time to have all three of you guys on. Yeah. Yeah, hey, sorry, I was watching. Hey. How's it going, guys? Good. Good. How are you? So did you all did you guys all get on the show? Was it through Instagram? Or how did each of you get affiliated with the show? Um, I, I got affiliated. Yeah. Um, my story was I was actually at a tech school and I had um, done a little tiny segment on one of David Kev's earlier seasons of Bitch and Rides. And so kind of when it just came up, they gave me a call and asked if it was something I'd be interested in. And of course, I told them, heck yes. <laughs> and <laughs> they just kept me updated through that. and. Yeah, it was a really cool thing to do. Yeah. Awesome. So, let's see. Are they doing a new season, or is that are they just playing the first season? I'm not on uh, They're on still playing the right first now. season. Yeah. Okay. So, okay. it went out on the app first in March, and then they put it on regular cable just recently. So, I mean, it's okay. the second airing, but it's still the first season. Okay. I just want to make sure, because I was like, I wasn't sure if they were doing the second one yet, or if they are doing a second one. We don't even know that. It might but, be. Uh, we're talking about it. 
Yeah. Yeah. Well, was it, uh, how long were you guys shooting? I mean, how long did that, did that take you guys to do all the episodes? We started was, at the beginning of January. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah, and it went through pretty much the end of the month. So I think we filmed the show in like 17 or 18 actual days. Uh-huh. But, you know, there were days off between filming and stuff, too. Okay. Yeah. And then, like, the worst part is for my elimination, <laughs> we stopped filming on a Thursday. And then they're like, oh, yeah. okay, we don't film again till Monday. So I sit there like, oh, my <laughs> gosh, I got to wait three, four days. Four days. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the exact same thing happened with me and her brother Frank. Like, we both like were very sure that we were going home, but they made us wait like a full weekend and we just wait and wait and wait and wonder what's gonna happen for them to just bring us back in and send us home and send us away. And then yeah. at, at that time, were you dealing with COVID yet too, and all that going on? No, Still no COVID. Yet? Okay. So you didn't have to worry about that stuff, that mess. <laughs> so, well, it's awesome that you guys were all on together. I was kind of like, should I put you all on together? And then Will wanted to be on with with Frank, and, you know, everyone wants to be on with someone else. But it's good that you guys are all yeah. on together. So it's pretty cool. Um, what's, what's next for you, McKinley, then? Are you uh, starting your own shop? you have one, or...? Um, yeah, kind of. I'm in the middle. I'm trying to get something started up yeah. called Square Shop 20, where I've been posting some of the stuff I've been building. Um, I'm actually in Orem, Utah right now. I just came up here for an upholstery class, actually. So okay. I'm kind of learning how to do upholstery and working at a dealership until, um, like, March, and then hopefully get things off the ground. I've been taking some side jobs. Been welding some cab corners on a 50 Chev. I've been working on my 72 Cougar. And in December, I'm painting a uh, second gen Dodge. I also love big trucks. Nice. <laughs> That's awesome. Well, keep it going. And uh, it's pretty cool that you got, you know, you're doing a tech school, then you end up on, you know, working on, on uh, the show. So it's just pretty cool. She's so awesome. talented for her age. Yeah. <laughs> That's good. Thank you. Keep it up. We need more people in the industry. So that's great. Um, you got anything, Jeff? You're kind of quiet tonight. I'm taking it all in, buddy. You're taking just it all in. Taking it all in. He's usually the one that does all the talking. I'm just kind of poking it up like a sponge. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, Frank's. Uh, I saw his. He's got a lot of cars. I don't know. If you ever have too many cars, Frank, let me know. I'll see what I can do. <laughs> I don't. I don't think that's a possibility, but I'll. Uh, I'll be sure to keep you in mind. Like, yeah. Good answer, Frank. Yeah. Exactly. Not even a possibility. <laughs> yeah, I, I think he keeps everything he gets. So that's what I. That's what I saw in some of the stuff I heard about him. So the only limitation is the more land. The more land you get, the more cars you can fill it with, right? So. Uh, there you go. Good. I need a bigger garage. I need a That's garage, right. period. You know, car owner virus also could be, you know, car owner virus. That's kind of, it's kind of take off of coronavirus, but I thought, you know, a lot of people have a 200 car car collection, you know, so. Okay. <laughs> so it can be, but uh, that's how I kind of came up with the name in about two seconds. Why am I going to name the podcast? thought of that in March, so. Well, uh, I don't know. We got the guys from Garage Squad, but I don't see any of them coming up yet. So, uh, oh, geez, are you gonna have to break the schedule? Oh, no. I'm, you know, I'm trying to keep it somewhat organized, but you know how that can go. Exactly. Look, what I've got I've got my bosom buddy and lifelong friend here. Okay, so you got you know I didn't have him on the list or her. Him well, no, her. Scout, Scout, the oh. Scout doesn't say very much. Yeah, he wasn't on the list. <laughs> yeah, she's on the list. <laughs> well, there's Tori. Oh, Tori uh, got Jamie and McKinley on and Frank on. So Tori's been uh, my right hand man behind the scenes, helping me out too. Always so, happy to help. I'll always be there for you guys. It's a pleasure. So 
he's uh you know he's very helpful tori has been a great guy so uh we we didn't get a couple of our guests but hey it happens they're busy we don't know if kev dog is gonna join or not yet maybe you know? at the end of the show he said okay we'll see all right well i haven't seen any of the garage squad guys so far but we got mike cotton and we don't know no way we, seriously we don't, we don't know if newburn's coming because he might be busy so from that hit new motors trend show fast with finnegan that's yeah us. that's that's, that's us. us that's us no i don't know if newburn's gonna be here. yeah he's been he, newburn doesn't like my attitude you can be honest he doesn't like me <laughs> yeah, you don't like you. i don't even like you so why i, I know <laughs> <laughs> You guys, it looks like Cotton's just like he's selling every shirt like every day on on Facebook. He's all oh, over the place. Oh, I don't even. I'm wearing the wrong hat. It's in my car. I packed it. I got my worm hat, and I had uh, it. I dude. moved yesterday. I moved all my stuff yesterday, and I said, and, and I'm not making this up either. Um, I drove from Colorado to California, and on my way to the Great Sand Dunes, and I, I had on my my Cotton does the worm hat. I love uh, that hat. But it got hot out, and I start sweating, and now I'm getting the, the sweat bands and the hat, so I had to change out to my old Chevy hat because I don't want to sweat up my cotton does the worm hat. You know, so. you know, I got that other Chevy hat that you gave me at Power Tour that you wanted me to give to you again, but I still have it sitting here at the shop. Nice. Thanks. So keep that for me. Uh, I'm not giving it to you right now. Son of a <laughs> <laughs> But I do love my cotton does the worm hat. I still never Wait, saw. I did I miss the worm on the show on the first season? Did I miss? Dude, it? you didn't see him doing the worm at the end of the show. His belly <laughs> hanging out. <laughs> oh, <laughs> it was gold. It was gold. Okay, I missed that. Listen, I'm gonna tell you. We raced at Thunderbird, and we were racing against Dragwire, which I swore to God we were not gonna ever win. So I said, if we lose or if we win, then I'll do the worm, which I never thought. My 48 year old ass would ever do the worm. So then right. we won. And then I had to do the worm. And it sucked <laughs> because there was like four different cameras and a drone. And then, of course, they get in my belly just smacking that concrete and they put it in slow mo, which really sucked. So now <laughs> I have to always do that. With it. it works. The logo works. So I. Oh, it's where it's. And bravo, my friend. It is, it is genius. But you brought up the T-Bird, which you guys affectionately call T-Bizzle. What happened to that thing after the show? Um, Roadkill took it last year. They did an episode. And then on the way home, the hauler got in a wreck. So the T-Bird got sideswiped, flipped, whatever you want to call it, and it was total. But this season, because we just got done doing season two, um, we brought the lungs back. And we're going to put it on a different car. So it, it turned out really badass what we did. You just gonna have to see it because it's. I'm not yep. gonna tell you about it. Yeah. And top, give me. I've secret. seen some. You guys have been floating some pictures on Facebook and Instagram and stuff about season two. Some of the exploits. I've yeah. seen some brown thing with uh, these flare deals on it. What? What? Uh, what do you got? What? Can, give us a. Give us a sneak peek on season two. I can't. So they Shut actually. Up, we stepped it. <laughs> like we really stepped. It, okay. And um, they gave us. Better stuff to do, I guess you would say. And then we did a race. The car you're talking about is a Fairmont, right? So we oh, raced yeah, this the Fairmont. Point. Right. We raced the 78 Fairmont. And the reason why I liked it so much was it's a Fox body. It's the beginning of the Mustang. So there were so many different kind of mods that anybody in the world can do. So we uh, raced it against uh, another car and got our ass handed to us, right? Then we went back and then slammed it and put the blower on it, put a new motor in it, and then we went back and erased it. And what you saw was I flared it. So I, we went back and I flared it, did the body work and everything in four days, and then lettered it the whole shebang. It looks cool. When you see it, you're gonna be like, holy cow, because it don't even look like the same car. It runs its ass off and I, I, yeah, I'm digging it. But we named it. Okay, so Mike would come up and he would always say, Cotton, I want you to flare a car so I can call it Rick Flair. Because we, in the beginning, we called it the unfair <laughs> Oh, jeez. Unfair <laughs> And we actually got, like, people texting us going, my car is called the unfair mod. And I'm like, 
dude, chill. Like, it was okay. So he wanted Ric Flair. And then a guy on our shoot was sitting there, and he was like, Ric Flair mine. So literally, that's the name of the car. It's Ric Flair mine now. The so Rolex we wearing, it, diamond ring wearing, jet plane flying, limousine riding, and I can barely keep these gators down. Woo! Oh, baby. Yeah. Yeah, you we know, had a fun time doing it. Remember Harrison from the Power Tour? Mm-hmm. Uh, the next time you talk to Harrison, ask him about Ric Flair. He used to uh, he used to serve Ric Flair drinks back where he used to live, and he's driven Ric Flair home many a times. He's got Ric Flair stories. Harrison. There you wow. go. Yeah. We had one. We had one episode that is the. It was like a bucket list, right? Because I've been building cars my whole life, but we actually race. Dennis Anderson, let that sink into your head. Like, we go to his place on his ground and erase him. Man, I've never ever talked that much smack in my life to somebody. You, it was so cotton much. for our for our, for uh, the folks at home who don't know who he is. We, we tell the folks at home. Yeah, that grave digger. If you don't know in the monster truck world, grave digger. Well, there's Bigfoot and there's grave digger. This is grave digger. Hey, right, you know. Grave Digger is like this immense, the, back in the 80s and early 90s, when you had the whole 4x4 four four stuff, it was Bigfoot and Grave Digger. That's all it was. And when he pulls up, literally, we about poo ourselves. I'm like, what? Because he gets out, and Mike's like, da, 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 and I'm like, da, da, da. so I had to tell him, I was like, man, I, I seen you when I was a kid. But then all of a sudden, I was like, that makes him feel really old, but I didn't care. Yeah. We had four <laughs> you didn't care. <laughs> <laughs> you know the, the whole thing of the show is us three are genuinely best friends so we can go have fun and do what we want to do all the time and the guests are straight up cool so you just you enjoy it like you, most shows and everybody here will say they get on your nerves right you go through your day and you're like oh when's it gonna end i don't care like i have a blast going in like we wake up in the morning do our temp check because that's what covid does Go in there and everybody sits around and, and you start building. Next thing you know, your 12-hour day is done. We have a blast. Literally a blast. I feel sorry for the editors and stuff because I don't know what I say most of the time. And they got to <laughs> fix it. So we'll see how that turns out in season two. Well, I see some well, people are joining now. Yeah, I know the season one did awesome. So congrats on season one. Continued Thank success you. on season two. Uh, where do people go to find uh, to find you online? Oh, you usually just find me on Instagram at Midwest Images. You could try Facebook, but I'm there and I'm not there. It's like that ghost town, you know what I mean? Yeah, so, so Midwest uh, Images on Instagram. And then if you want to check them out on Facebook, it's Cotton with an E-N, not O-N, C-O-T-T-E-N. And what if what about if someone wants to get a shirt or a hat? Um, depending on what shirt or hat you want. Like, if you want my stuff, you go to alltastelikechicken.com. Um, you can <laughs> All also taste get like chicken. <laughs> that's, that's all taste like chicken.com all right and then you got you'll do like if you want to get the fast wow. finnegan where um you can get on the motor trend app or the motor trend store and get it that way uh finnegan has some killer stuff on his at fsmgarage.com um we're everywhere man everywhere you wear my stuff all the time so be quiet all over all over facebook if we if we search the worm are you gonna pop up i don't know Saying. Search the hashtag. Cotton does the worm. C O T T E N. Cotton does the worm. I started that hashtag. But yeah, the shirts are soft. They don't shrink, and I love the hat. I'm just not wearing it right now because I don't want to get it sweaty. Hey, thank you, but I I just I just pay a guy to do it, man. I, he does. <laughs> he he's doing a good job. I've seen your picture about a hundred times in the last two days. <laughs> well, that would be uh, buying. That's what that. <laughs> Now we got no result. Okay. What happened? I have See, no idea. Talking that smack, you talk smack and then the whole thing went. <laughs> I don't know. I had never seen Amy's that. Amy's turning her phone. What's going it, on? It ain't on my phone. Here. Okay. Uh, how many people on here got an iPhone? Raise your hands. Have a what? Cell phone? An iPhone. iPhone. Does everybody I, got iPhone? I got a phone, but I'm on my computer. Okay. See, I'm an Android person. And I'm not going to use an one iPhone of those guys. because that's I, no, because iPhones, man, you got to buy a new one every freaking year. They're on a twelve. Well, this one five years, years and it's for good. I've had this one since 1972. <laughs> Jeez, I can't do it. <laughs> I can't do it. 
<laughs> well, we got, thanks for coming we, on, Cotton. We appreciate yeah, you. Yeah, thanks, Cotton. We're going to be on later if you want to join in the melee and whatever. <laughs> later tonight. 9.35 Central. 9.35 Central. We're going to... Whoever comes on, comes on. We got the guys from Garage Squad on right now. You're supposed to be after them, but they're just getting on now. So, all right, Joe, hey. Thank you. How you doing, Hello, Joe? How are you? And Ron, we got Ron, and we got Kingster. Julia, Joe, yep. the most high. And Cy is uh, missing. <laughs> Cy's old. Cy is missing. <laughs> And we also are going to have, uh, was it your producer or director? He was going to be on, but something came up. So he had uh, something come up tonight. So yeah, he's, he's, uh, he's out in uh, Texas right now doing a thing with Tanner Faust right now. Okay. And, uh, yeah, so he's out having fun riding around in race cars, you know. Well, that might be a little more fun than a podcast. I don't know. Just saying. Oh, but come on, Mike. We're, we're still having fun. <laughs> We're still having fun. This is our. This is kind of you know making up for SEMA that we're gonna mess. Kind of. Oh, don't get me started. SEMA, PRI, uh, this just sucks. Yeah. Bad. Yeah. You're keeping busy though. Always. We're all yeah. busy. These Garage Squad guys. If we ain't slinging wrenches on Garage Squad, we're slinging wrenches on you know in our own shops, right, guys? I mean, it just never stops for us. Right. Yep. Yeah, we're busy. So what are you, you slinging got... wrenches on in your own shop? Oh, I don't know. Always something. Right now, I'm building another Daytona. Uh, oh my How gosh. many Daytonas do you have? That's all how I many... see you post. That you're going to the drag strip with one Daytona, or how many do you need? That's the other question. It's probably all of them. I don't know. I mean, that's kind of a dumb question, isn't it? I mean, like, how many can you get? <laughs> yes. I think it's the next yeah. thing, right? Yeah. Uh, yeah, that's what I'm doing. I know the guys. They're always doing stuff. You know, I mean, this just you know, we're always. You know, guys, what we do on Garage Squad is exactly what we do when we're not filming. I mean, it's the same thing year round for us. Right. So I keep a bit. Yeah, you're always working on your cars. Uh, got something always going on. Yeah, yeah. I'm building another Daytona right now for my wife. Another blown alcohol car, and uh, we're gonna go run Expedition next year. Uh, if everything goes good with her, she's uh, she's doing very well. She had some surgeries here recently. Uh, on her knee, and uh, but things are looking up, and uh, so we're getting ready for next year. That's what I'm doing this winter personally. I mean, I got customer stuff I'm doing, and I know uh, the guys. I mean, I know Kingster's got a race car. Ronnie's got, you know, everything going on. I think, you know, some Hellcat Jeep or something, Ronnie, are you doing? What? I don't even know anymore. I can't, we can't keep up with each other, all the stuff we're doing. <laughs> that sounds interesting. Yeah, we're busy. We got a few things going. It's fun. Yeah. Well, I get to see you this time on the last podcast. I never even got to see you. I couldn't see you. Everyone else could, except for me. Must have been that iPhone thing we had going on, but now we're straightened out. There you go. So, so tell us about what you're building then. Is it top secret? Joe just uh, built the beans? Well, the Hellcat what? thing is the Hellcat. I ain't got that kind of money. But... Uh, <laughs> I, I'm just some customer work right now. All my stuff sits. I'm too busy. So uh, I got a, a big black FJ40 in there. I'm doing a little tuning on, some fixing up. Um, I got a 59 Oldsmobile Dynamic 88 and putting fuel injection on. Um, what else do I got over there? I got a Mercury S55. Um, kind of a rare car. Doing uh, doing a uh, frame off on that one. And uh, oh, wow. I don't know what else. And your AMC too, right? Yeah, all my stuff's sitting. I got a bunch of stuff, but it's all sitting. It's all we, I got, I got, I got plenty of job to do, so, you know how it is. Yeah. Well. So. And you, and we got race cars, and we got uh, other stuff that the Kingster's doing, or what? What are you doing, Kingster? Well, I've been trying to get this uh, notch back done next to us right here. Um, typical LS build for it. I'm just trying to have fun with it. Something to go to car shows and hopefully hit the drag strip, too, so. That's the plan with that, and it's just hard to find time to work on it, really. It's just right. something all the time that needs to be done. There's always work, side jobs, whatnot, so well, you guys hopefully just one finished, of these days. You guys just finished filming what season now? Is it nine or? Seven. Seven. Uh, seven. seven. Oh, seven. Yeah. Lucky wow. seven, and uh, let's see, we filmed, uh, let's see, season seven, 
and the last car we did with our was our seventy seventh car. Huh. So lucky well, us. So that's a, that works. My lucky that. number. That's my lucky number. So that means something. <laughs> yeah. But I, I think uh, guys, I mean, uh, tune in this year and watch it. I mean, I think we knocked it out of the park this year. I mean, we had some really cool stuff. I mean. We did some crazy builds. I mean, the last one we just did, the M715, I mean, it was just nuts. And uh, I I think that uh, it'll be a cool episode, you know, for somebody, uh, for every little niche out there, I think will be great this year, you know. Okay. We'll have to check it out. We work hard, guys. I ain't going to lie. I mean, you know, (laughs) I know that there's some guys out there, you know, I mean, they, they build some bad stuff, but. Guys, man, we're on jack stands. We're in the weather. You know, we're we're we. You know, we're mobile garage going from house to house. And I gotta tell you, it gets hard. It gets difficult. But bottom line <laughs> is, is uh, our team's just badass. I mean, and and I think after seven seasons, I mean, we've had some ups and downs. But I think that you know we're all proud of what we do and what we've accomplished and and built. I know we love helping people, and it just all works out. And, uh, what was one of the cars that stood out to you this season, Joe? Well, me personally, I mean, it would be a Daytona. What else would it be? No, the, <laughs> you guys worked on a Daytona this season on Garage Squad? Yeah. yeah. You did? Really? Yeah. Okay. yeah. Very cool. Yeah. And we all kind of had, you know, well, at least me and Ronnie for sure had our niche this year. I mean, I had the Daytona that we did. And then, you know, Ronnie's emails got, you know, Ronnie Kaiser. So that M7, you know, we did a Kaiser this year. So, I mean, it was like. It was like our year, you know what I mean? Yeah. It was the year for us. It, I mean, we had just as much fun as building some of this stuff as these owners had of even owning it, you know? Yeah. Oh, very cool. And that's got to translate onto video. Oh, well, yeah, of course yeah. it will, you know? Yeah. Right. That's fantastic. <laughs> but, uh, man, it, it's just a great year. I mean, and, uh, you know, I mean, we filmed through COVID. I mean, I now, hey, now, maybe I'm wrong with some of this, but I'm pretty sure guys help me if I'm wrong. But but uh, we were like the one of the only shows that started filming during COVID. And, uh, you know, I ain't going to lie, it, it sucked, okay? Wearing masks suck, you know, in the yeah. hot heat, you know, and all that. And, and you know, we're, you know, uh, it was just a mess, to be honest with you. And uh-huh. there was some times it was getting tough. We didn't know if we were going to make it. Uh, but, you know, we all pulled together, you know, and we all kind of, carried you know each other along i know the guys carried me you know on a couple builds i was you know not doing so hot but uh i mean we all did it we pulled through man and and we ended up making a badass season and i think uh all of us should be proud of what we did this year cool yeah. well yeah i'm wearing a mask i have to wear them sometimes 10 hours at work you know it's just uh man and then you're out in the heat and yeah it's not that you feel like crap <laughs> Do you guys have any say on uh, on choosing the cars that you guys get to build on the show, or do the producers all uh, take take all that stuff? Uh, uh, you know, we really don't want to say anything on that. I'll be honest with you. Oh, it's all good. Yeah, phone will be uh, exploding. Yeah. Okay, you, you, you follow. Hundred <laughs> uh, percent. I'll tell you here. How about I tell you what? we are told to tell everybody here's what it boils down you <laughs> submit your car there's twelve thousand submissions a year they break it down to about 30 and say okay what are we going to do and then we look at cars from there does that sound nice. i mean that kind of that kind of 100 percent that sounds fair right yeah 100 percent. okay i, I right. totally get we'll, it we'll otherwise they'll be beating up me side kingster and ronnie you know <laughs> every day <laughs> But at the end of the day, I do tell everybody, no matter what, it has to go through the submission page. Uh, that's the way the network likes it. That's the way we like it. So it really doesn't matter if you come up to us and show us your car. The only thing we're going to tell you is you got to submit it because there's really nothing we can do. Uh, you know, we really cannot present it to the network. They want it done, you know, in a fair fashion. And that's just how we leave it. So for the, the folks at home who want to uh, submit a car or potentially submit a car, is it garagesquad.com and follow the, the, the prompts? Yeah, pretty much. Yeah, exactly. That sounds fair, guys. I mean, that sounds about right, doesn't it? That's but, right. Yeah. 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 A, a car's got to just... fit a certain amount to be able to get one done. Like, if it's if it's right in the field with trees growing through it, we can't do it. 
You know, yeah, it's just it, that's too much work. If it's yeah, got tro- it, if it's got trophies sitting next to it, we're not gonna do it. <laughs> you know, but the network doesn't know that till Joe goes and checks them out first. You know. Yeah, you know. I mean, and, and we have to put our eyes on them because we've had people send submissions. I'm not even over exaggerating. The guys, I'm telling you, they'll tell. You. We've had submissions where they sent four photos, all of them at different angles with the car cover on it. Not even joking. Uh-huh. So <laughs> I'm not even. I'm not even playing. I mean, we've had guys they send photos of what the car was in 1972. <laughs> we don't even know what it looks like today, you know. So we do get some wild sub. Or, I mean, we get some wild uh, submissions. Trust me. I bet. Yeah. Well, I love the show. <laughs> Continued success. And what'd you say? Season seven. Season seven. Yeah, that's, that's fantastic, man! Congratulations. Yeah, season congratulations. Seven. And uh, also, is Jamie still on here? She went and did the boot camp she, thing. She, she might have left. Uh, she was on for a while, but. Oh, okay, yeah, well, I just say congratulations because she's right here in our backyard. She's from Elgin area, nice. I believe. So yeah. that was really cool. We had someone from Illinois that, uh, you know, made it there. I thought that was really neat. Yeah. Good for her. Really cool. Congratulations to her. Yeah, she, well, I don't know if she'll come back on. We're going to have like a little get together at the end of the night, 935 Central Time, where people will just show up, but I don't know. People are just okay. coming and going, which is kind of what I expected. <laughs> Cotton's still here. <laughs> of he might he be sl- unless he's sleeping. I don't know. All right. Well, nice having you guys on. Thanks again for joining the the podcast. Thanks, you guys. Thanks for having us. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Nice seeing you guys. Thank uh, you. If you guys want to stop back later, you can. So. Yep. All righty. Thanks a lot, guys. We'll see you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Well, we don't have. We had Cotton on, and he's off. We're up to Shay. Cotton's still here. He's on and off. He looked like he's. We got Mark Green here. We got Chris and Robin. Yeah. Bruce Lee is in the house. We can just talk. Hey, Lewis. Shag's what coming up at six twenty, and Shorty from Iron. I got to say, I, I I do appreciate Mark's. Uh, his thank you cards. He always sends us a thank you card after we're on the show. It's very, uh, very yeah. classy. Yeah, See, I'm like school in the summertime. No class. But to Mark, you've got class. Yes, he does. That's why and he's got had... one of three uh, metallic orange colored 930s in all the yeah. land in a factory color. That's pretty nice. And Super cool. he had some awesome pictures of it recently. That was, I did. Amazing. Yeah, absolutely. Amazing yeah. pictures. Oh, my a, gosh. Uh, past guest of mine, uh, Ingo Schmolt, came into town just to shoot the car. So he did a nice job. Amazing. Oh, he came in just to shoot it? Yeah, yeah. He called me and said, hey, I want to come up and shoot your car. I want to do some night stuff. He does it with this light wand. Yeah. And he does, like, 12 exposures and then puts yep. it all together. And so we went out about 9 p.m. I live in a little community in Gig Harbor and took the car around and uh, – he did some amazing stuff. You'll see him posted on uh, Cars yeah Instagram page. Uh, they just, yeah, the color is so insane that when he did it the way he did it, it just looked like candy. He wanted to just yeah. reach into it. So, yeah, it's unreal. And while I'm unmuted here, Lewis, you're you're a stud, dude. You're so kind to repost all the stuff I post. Oh yeah, that car's nice too. That wagon thing. Well, that similar to that that light painting you're talking about. That yeah. light yeah, painting. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Painting. Yeah, they merge everything together. It's nuts. Yeah, so wait, sorry to interrupt. What I was going to say, Lewis is so nice. He always reposts my stuff. I really appreciate that. He's he's a great guy. Hey, anytime, man. I'm I'm here to help. Yeah, hey, Lewis. You do. We got some great people. I'm I'm happy to call every all you guys friends. Um, you know, I think just amazing people, and it's it's great to know all these people. And we're gonna miss you at SEMA this year. But I better not say that because I keep saying it. But We'd probably see all of you guys there. Um, well, I guess we're definitely going to be off schedule now. Uh, we could have. Uh, oh, geez. We, people walking around the background. Yeah, yeah. There's people walking so behind Lewis, loosely. How you doing, Lewis? <laughs> I haven't seen you for a little while. Yeah. What do you have to, Lewis? Hey, you know, just trying to keep it moving. You know, yeah. doing the same old stuff. How's everybody? I'm glad to see everybody. All my friends are here. That's cool. Popping in and out. 
We got yep, coming yep. in and out all night for five hours. <laughs> hey, I'd like to but, thank you for inviting me on, man. I appreciate you. I appreciate you too. You know, you guys are great guys. You and Terry and Corey, all all great people. Yeah, this whole community is, is really good people. And uh, it, it's nice that the internet has opened up where we can all stay in touch and see what everybody's doing. You know, that's a, a incredible asset to the automotive industry. Right, right. And we'll yep, see yep. a SEMA 360 online. That should be interesting. I, did you do a sign up for media for that, Lewis? Yes, I did. Um, okay. So, yeah, I'll, I'll be playing around there somewhere. Yeah, me too. We'll see. Do we so I see, I see Mike Cotton on here. I'd like to give Mike a hug, virtual hug, because he don't call hug. the brother back. <laughs> oh, uh oh, calling out. <laughs> Every time you text me, it's like I'm usually doing stuff. <laughs> yeah, like the, the worm, <laughs> like the worm, you know. Yeah, just... <laughs> yeah, it was the whole season, and I'm sitting there at night, and I look up, and you're like, yo, what's up, bro? And I'm like, I'm sleeping now, dog. <laughs> <laughs> That's because you're riding right. with Newburn. You're always riding with Newburn. You, you think look like you're going to get, you know, you're screaming and going to get killed or something. Okay, let me explain this whole scream and stuff so you guys get this <laughs> A, I have no filter, so whatever you see is what you see. B, yeah. I only scream when I'm scared. So if I go in there and ride with Finnegan, I'm scared. Yeah. Because the dude, he ain't did it, right? Like, we ain't did the stuff, so then he gets in there and he just drives it as hard as possible. Well, yeah, anybody with balls is going to be scared because the dude <laughs> just goes hard at it. But now, this season, we got, like, professional people, and I ain't scared at all because that's their job, and I enjoy it. He's in there and he just drives it as hard as possible. But yeah, anybody with balls is going to scare. Oh, boy. I think oh we got some sort of echo. That was so, an echo. I think it was. Tell David me about Aiken. this new fire suit. Aiken. I've seen Sorry. pictures of you online with a new fire suit. Hey, why are you dogging on me? I'm not dogging you, dude. I'm not talking smack. That's you know a compliment. What? I wish I had a fire suit. Hey, I don't have a. I don't have anything flame we retardant. Have we have to be safe. You got to be safe, bro. You know what I mean? You get. You can't catch on fire on TV, so we, we stay safe. Don't when you're on man. TV or off TV, I don't want to catch on fire. He, I, this is what I don't understand. He says he's staying safe, but then he's riding yeah. with these guys. <laughs> yeah. He's yeah. taking the safety precautions. He's got the helmet. He's got the fire suit. He's got the flame retardant underpants. Safety third. Right. Can you make those? <laughs> I don't know. Does a cat have an ass? Device. I got a Hans device now. Do you really? <laughs> yeah. We got Hans devices and everything now. I, I oh, saw I that video. I saw that video with you and Newburn going through like the the creek and water, oh. literally going over you. <laughs> I told him, "Look, we'll go, but I don't want to get muddy or wet or anything." He's like, "All right." Yeah, <laughs> right. And then. It's like, you know, when you look at a creek, you see the rocks, right? So the water's not deep, but then all of a sudden the water stops. And I'm like, dude, he goes, oh, it's good. I'm like, no, that looks <laughs> deep. He's like, oh, it's good. So we're riding. Literally in that video, when you see it, like, flip to me, the water turned the phone around because I had no idea what was going on. And he's like, you scream like a girl. It was 80 million degrees outside. I got hit with cold water. You're going to be freezing. You're going to scream like a girl. I don't care what anyone's got to say. And right when the phone flipped. Literally, water come comes over your shoulder. <laughs> it, it just smoked us, man. And he's like, it's okay. And I'm like, no. I don't want to be wet. I don't like dirt. I don't like mud. I don't want to be wet. Well. Why? I'm a grown-up. I don't have to. Well. He doesn't like dirt. He doesn't like mud. He doesn't like chicken fingers. Why don't you like America? Dude, you and your chicken fingers. Don't, chickens don't have fingers. They have claws. Second of all, you like them chilies, chicken fingers. There's a oh, whole they're menu. So, they're so delicious. There's a whole menu, bro. <laughs> like, why do you want to worry about chilies, chicken fingers all the whole time? Like, when you're five, you can do that. But you're old now. You don't eat chicken fingers. <laughs> huh? You got to speak up. I don't hear so good. <laughs> I love my chicken fingers. I know you do. Right. <laughs> Just oh, like you boy. love your Arnold Palmers. Dude. 
Why you? Why you? Why? Yeah. Why you start something on national stuff? We want to go at it, dude. I'm gonna see you next time. I'm gonna <laughs> oh man! We better have security at SEMA when you guys run into each other or something. Yeah, right. I miss I miss SEMA so bad because I, you know, I've been building for so long. I've gone for so many years. So then, when you take a break and then you go back, you're like, oh, this is awesome. And then now it's not there. So I, I'm really anxious to see what the SEMA 360 does. Um, yeah gonna be different you know but it's just you get to see so many good people like you guys right and you get to hang out and you get to see just new products and it's just cool like i feel like a little kid there every time yeah i agree definitely well the past few years that i've been we haven't been able to hook up beforehand and it's always been the first day during the show when I'm working, talking to somebody, and all of a sudden I look over, and you and Newbert are sitting there like that next to each other, like, ah, there they are. <laughs> <laughs> You're a superstar, dude. You're That's a superstar. That's what I mean. It's, yeah, it's my car family. But I love SEMA so much. Right. You're a superstar. I, I love that. <laughs> well, Lewis Lee could be security, so if you need Lewis Lee to jump in. <laughs> hey, we'll handle it. <laughs> dudes I've ever met like that. I didn't expect <laughs> Lewis to be so tall or Terry to be that tall. But when I'm talking yeah. to nipples, you're too tall. That's, that's <laughs> <laughs> well, they're, they're big guys, you know. Hey, Stand you out gotta eat crowd. your Wheaties, that's all. Yeah, there you go. You just gotta eat your Wheaties. <laughs> is that, is that yeah, what I'm happened? 40, I'm 49 years old and I've been eating plenty of Wheaties and I ain't growing. I grow out, I don't grow tall, so I just keep yeah. growing out. <laughs> Hey, I've been listen, telling people for years that Cotton's going to hit his growth spurt in a, in a couple of months. He's going to hit his growth spurt. <laughs> listen, short guys have more fun because they can fit in more cars. Yeah, I, I'm limited. I can only fit in a couple. <laughs> yeah, good point. Good point. Yeah, I, I, I can't. I can't fit in some cars either. So I'll tell you. Well, speaking of, did uh, Lewis? Did you ever try fitting in the whole Camino? I I looked at it, but man, I don't know. I I didn't want to get stuck, and then they had to take me home. That's it. They let me sit in it. It was super bitch and build, super cool, uh, but I actually got in it, and, yeah, I love that thing. What do you guys got planned uh, coming up next year or coming up this year? What do you guys got coming up with the uh, the, the whole Camino? Oh, Shay. Oh, Dag's yeah, here. here. His microphone's not on. And, Chris, yours is, yeah, you're good. I don't know. We can't yeah. hear you, though. Or are yeah, you it was, talking? It says he's still on mute. Oh, I don't see it on my end. Weird. That is weird. How about that? Oh, there, there. Hey, does that work? Does that work? You can hear me? Yeah, can hear now you. I can hear you. You got yeah. the Hulk Camino behind you. Yep. So the, Such an awesome yeah. car. Hey, Shag, do you like that Hulk Camino? Dang, that, you might not be on either. Well, Shag is on, but he's on a mute. Yeah, you can shut it. I'm sorry. Okay. He's on mute. He's got the full beard. He's like Grizzly Adams. Yeah, he's look, looking good. He's working whole at his new, garage. Whole new look. He's been doing garage stuff. Got a trailer. The radio for shack him. behind him, the cartoons. He should be wearing a one, uh, what is it, a first up t-shirt sponsoring with a Greenwood Village. <laughs> the heck? Are you? Yeah, he's I'm still mute. on mute, Mike. Yeah, Shay, I'm trying to unmute him. Hey, Shay, can you unmute? No. Hold yeah, on. we can't hear you, Shag. There, it, but oh, hello. So my my nephew Drew got uh, for his birthday. He got the uh, a Millennium Falcon Lego kit, and I know Shag has already done it. So I had to call up Shag to get some uh, some pointers from him, and uh, hopefully over Christmas, uh, my nephew and I will be uh, building the Millennium Falcon out of Legos. It'll be very special. That'd be cool. And and then he can yeah, send right. pictures. Send pictures of it to Shag since he's already done it. He's done it 100 a year before you. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you rub it in. Yeah. Well, I I don't know if he can get it to unmute. I've tried to unmute it, but it says click to unmute, and I click on my end. It doesn't. <laughs> Cotton, what? Are you laughing? This high tool, all this technology, I bet you all have iPhones. That's what it is. If you had an Apple, we were... <laughs> yeah. I'm on my computer. 
I play I think, whatever. I think he's good now. Oh no, I'm looking at cottons. <laughs> oh man. I don't know, Shag. We can't. I can't get you on mute. Yeah, there should. There's a little microphone thing. How about there now? There, there it is. There he is. You, hear, you can hear me now. All right. Now we can hear you. I dig that cartoon shirt. I was. I think it was Freiburger. Someone was telling me that he had. So, no, it was you. That they they uh, Trosley drew you in one of his uh, in one of his comics. That's yeah, bad. man. Yeah, I've I've actually been in the been in the magazine a few times, uh, and then on the cover twice. Which I mean, dude, that's that's a that's a dream right there. That's badass. Yeah. Yeah, hundred percent immortalized. Yeah. So what's Sorry, up with the moving. beard? What the, you, you know just what? lazy? Is it a new yeah, look? That, it, that's really what it is. It comes down yeah. to just being lazy. We de- I haven't been into shop in a month. Uh, in a month. Just, you know, what production's yeah. been, it's just, you know, it is what it is. Uh, but I haven't been there in a month, so I, I just didn't shave. So this is a month. So mm-hmm. I'm thinking about uh, letting it keep going, just till it gets completely ir- irritating and uncontrollable. There you go. <laughs> Or until my uh, part-time gig at the mall gives up. There you go. <laughs> like, I think the longest I was, I, I don't, I, I didn't go, I don't think it was three months with my face and it got just so annoying. I had to cut it all off. I mean, Lewis is, that's, that's, if I can get as long as Lewis, that's, that's, oh, that, uh, that's solid. Yeah. That's dedication. Hey, listen, you probably get to this in three months. This took me four years and it stopped. It won't go no more. I think I can get <laughs> you know, there after a solid Mexican dinner. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> Mexican Listen, I tried to get on the, I tried to get on uh, Duck Dynasty, but they said it wasn't long enough. And I, I'm hit. Uh, there you right? go. <laughs> I saw a picture of you without a beard. I was like, that's loosely. <laughs> I just used to you with a beard now. How you guys Try doing, man? How's everyone? Great, man. How you doing? I'm, I that's, mean, your garage is still the same color floor. I don't think it's done oh, yet. No, no, no. Oh, oh, is it done? You didn't see the oh, video, Mike? Look at that. I missed the video. Holy Dude, cow. It is done. Those okay. green lines are, uh, I had to mark the ground where the where something's going to go. But, yeah, that's oh. everything that sh- everything right is in my – my garage is basically in that uh, cargo trailer. And, and the Homeowners Association didn't even give him help for having no, his refrigerator no, no, in the driveway for four days. <laughs> yeah. Right? That was, that was shocking. I'm not going to lie to you. I mean, a fridge in the driveway is like a toilet in the front yard. You know what I mean? It's, <laughs> it's, it's a merit I didn't get a letter. The toilet in the front yard. Now you're talking my business. <laughs> right. We got Brian on, but I, I know he's muted. I, I even saw him on there twice. He had two going on at, some, at the same time. But you're just muted right now. I just don't have everyone on. So, we... so you haven't been in the shop for a month. Yeah. And you just got uh, done epoxying your floor. Uh, what else have you got going on? Let's see. What have I done, man? Uh, Where can the folks that don't find your shirts? My shirts? Uh, yeah. You can yeah. go to sh- shagarrington.com. That's it. Okay, shagarrington. Yeah, okay. yeah. shagarrington.com. I've got some shirts on there. Uh, I've got some more shirts, actually. Oh, uh, nice. I mean, nothing but, but cotton shirt, man. The, the Midwest, that's that's my favorite T-shirt. It's so oh, with the worm. Yeah. Oh yeah, and they're soft. Is that, yeah, they don't like, drink. Seriously, I'm not blowing it up for any other reason outside the fact that that is one of the most comfortable T-shirts I've ever owned. I mean, I wear it all the time. Right. Nice. Terry, I wear Terry's yeah, mine too. Except when I'm supposed to be on the air. Yeah. What's up, Terry? <laughs> Hover Terry's man, here. 66 in the house. Man, if we Case can give everyone before. hugs at the same time, man, you know. Uh, <laughs> next year hey this week november 1st 2021 we'll i'll see all you guys yeah man big big group hug or get together or something hopefully right i, I started packing my bags last night just out of ghost pains like, what am I doing? <laughs> i'd be on a i'd be on a flight right now right oh, now be, to see him I'd be, I'd be i'd be wasted somewhere by now but oh man <laughs> You take your whole trailer of stuff with you. <laughs> hey, who are we, who are we waiting on? Are we waiting on somebody or? Well, Shorty was coming, but I don't know. Does he is he good at technology? Absolutely. He's not here. You were you were the one up at six twenty at six twenty one, but right. I don't see Shorty anywhere. So you're gonna just have to make up for Shorty. I I, I think I can talk for ten minutes. 
you guys can you guys hear me now? Yeah, yeah. I had I, I have been mic uh muting mics because last time we had so many people talking in the background or a lot of noise. So that's why it's when people log in, it's automatically muted. But uh yeah, Shay, what do you got going on now? You, you so I mean, you've been sure, stuck yeah. for a month. Well, we've been shooting season. I'm not stuck. I mean, we just okay. there were some car shows. Now we lost Shay. It's really rigid. I mean, our show at least really rigid. If you need to be there, you're there. If you don't need to be there, don't come in because they're trying to really control the the comings and goings with uh, with COVID. You know, we're getting tested every three to four weeks, oh. if not. Can you guys hear me? Yeah. Uh, yeah. I I didn't hear you for a second, but you know, my ear my AirPods just shit the bed. Um, yeah. But anyway, uh, you know, the production's a little, it's, it's a little weird. Production's a little weird with, it, it's just a super rigid schedule. So if I don't need to be there, I'm not there. Same with everyone else. If you don't need to be there, they ask you to stay away. Right. But, but, uh, but you know, between shooting the show, we, uh, I mean, there, there's that. And that's a pretty flexible schedule. And then, weird enough, man, my, I have that touring, tourism business and, it wasn't going so well. And then we've got an investor, but the investor lives in Florida. And he said, here's the deal. I'll only invest if you open up a location in Panama City. And so it was like, they allowed us to continue business with our existing employees. But at the same time, we're testing out a franchise model in Panama City. So if you guys are in Panama City, not not beach, but city, just across the bridge, we're uh, we're up and running with uh, yourbikergang.com. So let me know. Awesome down there and want to go on a free ride That's and it's cool. they're not segways they're uh they're they're electric hell bikes no. hell yeah, no. what? <laughs> yeah that's why i want to make sure come on man <laughs> he's cooler than segway come on I mean, dude, you, know what the, you know what the cost of a segway is your integrity <laughs> oh <laughs> So that's good. To, good that that's going on. And yeah, I mean, it's, it, here's the deal. We, you know, we 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 got the trailer. We basically built it in a box, so it's mobile. We got it parked in Panama City Beach or Panama City, and we're just hey, it, we we literally just launched like two or three weeks ago. So hopefully, business will pick up. I mean, it's still their tourism season, and right. uh, as you guys all know in the news, it doesn't. I don't think Florida ever shut down. Hmm. All right. But good for us. We'll right. see. We'll see. It's not it's good for us yet, but we'll, we'll see what happens. Right. But other than that, man, I've just been like, uh, you know, my garage, my garage was a total crap. I painted the walls, built some super rad shelves around the top. Yeah, I, I built nice. Up, uh, way up in there. But uh, right. then I had to get the floor because nothing makes the floor look bad than, a, than a, you know, clean walls. So then I had the floor done, and now I'm just excited to park my project in here. And I, I'm not going to tell you what it is, but I'll definitely share it when it happens. That's it. He's got lines like he's lining it up like a jet, in, like a jet so driving in. <laughs> Look at that. It's 19 feet by six and a half feet. If that's any, if that'll give you any hints. <laughs> Sounds like a Cadillac to me. Uh -huh. Sounds like, like a Cadillac to me. It sure does, doesn't it? <laughs> <laughs> we'll see what happens, man. Could it be right. a shagalac? That's yeah. what I was thinking. Shagalac, right there. <laughs> nice. But, no, I'm just, uh, you know, just like everyone else, just trying to stay safe and get through it. Yeah. You know. So you haven't been able. To, obviously, you haven't been able to open up in Texas. And what's the outlook on that? Uh, open up. What? In, open up in what? In what do you mean? And, and your 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 biker gang. That's... Yeah, no, it's open. It's just. Oh, open. it is. It's all based. It, it's perception and reality. You know what I mean? Like the reality of it is, it's safe to do outside. You stay far apart. It's actually one of the things you could do and and be very safe. But the perception mm -hmm. is that everything's shut down and everyone's going to get sick by just looking in that direction. I'm not downplaying the the, the thing. I'm, I've got underlying issues, so I play it really safe, actually. You know, right. being asthmatic, uh, but it's all perception and reality. Like the reality is, it's safe to do. The perception is the state shut down. 
or these types of activities aren't safe. So we're just kind of rolling with the punches. The good thing is our landlord has been super great, uh, gracious. And uh, my, even my employees have taken a hit for pay just so they can stay employed. So every, it's just like everyone's doing their part to get along and make things, you know, uh, survive. Right. Right. That's awesome. I mean, you're one of the great guys, Shag. I mean, you, you took out that loan you told us before to keep your employees working. I mean, that just shows what kind of person you are and uh, very, very cool. I appreciate that, man. Yeah. I, I, I mean, your, bis your business is only your business. The only the idea is only as good as your people. And uh, we've got great people. So it's, it, it's I'm totally fine sacrificing or, or paying my dues later to keep good people on board. Yeah, it's just awesome. I just, you know, I can't say enough about about that. Thanks, man. Yeah. Well, Shorty skipping out on us or trying to. I'm know, sure there was something way more important. Or, or daylight savings time because that's messing people up tonight. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right, Shorty's right Terry. Terry, daylight savings. What? <laughs> so it's messing people up. Are you on, Terry? Yeah, he's your, muted. Your mic. He's on, but he's muted. Thanks for coming on, Shag, buddy. Check him out, shagarrington.com. He's got lots of cool T-shirt designs. My uh, man, Shag, guys, what's up? What's up? See you all around. Hey, There's me Terry. Later, me thanks for shirt. stopping in. Huh? <laughs> I got it. I'll send, hey, I'll send you another one. I got another one. For all right, hey, I love that shirt. All right, hey, we'll see you guys. Take care. Yeah, right, we'll see you. Thanks for stopping in. Bye. Well. Who we got on the list here? Uh, I haven't seen Sam Madavi yet, which I realized I didn't have his picture on the video I made. It, very hey, quickly. Hey, Mark, can I say something real quick? Yeah. Yeah, I want to say what's up to everyone. I see Chris out there. I see Boss One, my man Mike Cotton in the house. You know, right, got Jeff in the house, got Mike Liner. Can't forget my man Mark in the house. That's right. Lewis, right. the man, the myth, the legend. And my new friends over there, Case Custom. I want to say what's up. And forgive me for my lateness, please. Oh, that's all right. You're not even really late. <laughs> I, I, I just felt the same. <laughs> I just had to give you a hard time. Of course. I would expect nothing worse. You know? <laughs> and that, that cougar was hitting on you. <laughs> that wasn't me. <laughs> I, I didn't have the beautiful hair, you know, all that stuff. She's messing, she's, messing, she's messing with my fro. I didn't like that. <laughs> you know? Cot, Cotton's wondering what the heck we're talking about. Well, I don't well, think here's you, the thing. you should have been. A, you should have been out to dinner with us, Cotton. That's the but deal. Like you're, you're old, so a cougar would mean that she's really old. <laughs> she was older, <laughs> older than Terry. <laughs> no way. <laughs> but like I said, in my defense. She was the best looking out of the group, okay? Uh, <laughs> see, he, he tried to throw me under the bus, but it was him. And I wasn't even going to go there. <laughs> they let me sink. They let me sink. Oh, Mike, uh, I can't <laughs> <laughs> uh, Sam's on, but we're supposed to have Stacy David. I don't know where. Is Tori on? Tori, where are you? Can you guys hear me? Well, if they're not here, let's yeah, just move on beyond them. Yeah, cross off the list and continue on with somebody who is. We got well right now. It'd be uh, right there. Sam Davi is next on the list. There he is. And there hey, he is. How are you? Hey, can you guys hear me? Yeah, we can hear you good. Hey, Goody, what's up, Brian? What's up, Terry? What's up, Mike? What's it's all good people. It's all good people. What's up, Jeff? What's happening, buddy? How you guys what? doing tonight? Good. What's new in your world? You're gonna well. Did you have that? Did you have uh, Nelson's show on? Was that today? Yeah, uh, that was, uh, was one that one yesterday. Episodes of the Low Car Show that aired this weekend. Boss yeah. Hog Murders. His episode aired this weekend. We're finishing up the Low Car Show as we speak. This week is the last episode I'm shooting for this season, and then we start shooting season six of Sam's Garage in one month. It's going to be a big season. We're going to split it up. It's 26 episodes. We're going to split it up in two parts. We're going to do 13 episodes because we're doing two projects, one of them being a Jeep Crawler Wrangler and the other one being a 1978 Nissan 280Z chassis with a Ferrari 250 GTO body on it. And uh, we'll do a Ford uh, conversion to it. 
And uh, it's going to be awesome. So what we're going to do is we're going to start the projects. We're going to take a 13-week break. We're going to come back and do the second part of the season, the second 13 episodes, and show the finished products and put them back together, just like we did the Hudson with season uh, four and five. Nice. So it's going to be exciting. I'm very excited. Yeah. Wow. And you're busy. You've been running around to these shows. Uh, did you go to where a lot of shows canceled this year? I know, oh, obviously, they were. No, Mike, you know, we got lucky. We got we were postponed one full season. We're supposed to be start, starting the um, show in the spring. And as you guys know, that's when most of the shows start to take off is during the springtime. So all mm. these shows got canceled or postponed. And so we started everything up in July. And we mm. went to Pigeon Forge. There were two shows in Pigeon Forge. There were um, actually three shows in Pigeon Forge. And there were a few around here as well. I put two together myself. Um, and we just had a good time filming. So luckily, COVID did not affect us or slow us down. And with Sam's Garage being right here in my house, um, you know, we didn't slow down uh, shooting Sam's Garage either. So we were very fortunate. Nice. Good. That worked out good then for you. Absolutely. So how's everyone else? Brian, how you doing, man? Good, buddy. How you been, man? <laughs> good show. I watched, I watched that. I mean, it looked great. I got my two great. seconds of fame in. Yeah, Brian was <laughs> down there. That's right. Brian was there. I saw a lot of Facebook Facebook videos of him at uh, Nelson's show. Yeah, was uh, I was trying to help out a little bit. I went out there and uh, tried to keep that whole uh, thing together. That was the first time Nelson had done anything. So it was, uh, yeah. I've got about 150, 200 shows under my belt. And uh, it was, yeah. uh, he, I walked into, I walked into a hornet's nest. So we had to do a little right. clean up. And I think it came out really good. And, I, and we actually spoke as well to uh, the Music Hall of Fame to tease something into uh, our show. So mm -hmm. it looks like I've got to contact her back shortly here, but maybe do uh, maybe the car show over at the Music Hall of Fame. And literally, I think it's like, what, Sam, like a few blocks, like a few yeah. miles away? Drag there's, there's a drag strip right there. So nice. it looks like we might film All Out Live and the Call Out TV show simultaneously, do a car show, and they could just have a ticket and go back and forth. So make a whole big, you know, three-day kind of party out of it. Well, that'd be cool. Turn out yeah, there being for Daniel. So I think with your promoting uh, expertise, you can make a big show out of that. Yeah, yeah it's going to be fun. We need hey. something. We've had a pretty pretty bum year this year, I tell you. We got one yeah. show. In. Yeah. Hey, Brian. Wow. Hey, Brian. Yeah, yeah I saw the thing is, you know, the show, shows that we covered this season, there were so many new spectators at all these shows, so many newbies going to these shows, F100 National, the Jeep shows, who had never been to these shows before, the Pontiacs and Pigeon Forge, that was a big one. And so they were coming out because they were so bored sitting at home, get being cooped up, that they had to go do something. And so a car show was something that was going on, and it was something new to them. So it actually gained a lot of new um what do you say, uh, people who want to, enthusiasts who want to be hobbyists now, who are going to go buy those vehicles, spend the money, buy the parts, and do what we do every day. So that was pretty cool to see that actually happen. Yeah, and that's, right. and that's something kind of like a segue of, of what we're talking about for 2021. Um, we're having a big meeting here. My, my production uh, partner, Alex Peak, is coming into Florida. We're building a studio in my airport hangar down here, and we're going to run, um, we're going to have a whole big setup in here, just do videos and shows and blogs and stuff like that. We're having the floors coated, walls, offices. We're going to put my editing studio down here. But that's uh, all part that's going to tee into um, a few ideas. We're call I'm calling it the master plan. Um, so the idea is, is exactly what you said, is to bring new eyeballs and people in, somebody that might not know about drag racing, but maybe roll races or maybe drifts or something like that. So um, we're going to go into a couple of meetings. We talked to the Modern Hemi Shootout guys. And we talked to uh, Chris um, Harris, who works with uh, IRG and IHRA, and he does the Roll Racing Association and all that. And it looks like we're going to try to put together basically uh, all out motorsports festival. So we're going to try to do at least four big ones. And my goal is to try to, I, I know a lot of the guys, and, and uh, we want to call the guys at ZMAX, but we want to do it at the biggest you know, facility that could do something like that. So my goal is to get into ZMAX this year and not just do drag racing but roll racing, drifting, just a big old mega festival. It'd be great to have you, Sam, of course. You'd, we're open to everybody to come out and have some fun. But the idea is that get the crossover from everybody so they could, you know, if they don't like drag racing, they might, or have never seen drag racing, but they watch the roll racing drifting, they get a chance to cross over. One ticket covers everything. Just a big, you know, our, our thing is we're the grassroots guys. So 
you know, it's just one big party and, and everybody has fun and, you know, not all this craziness and stuff like that, but just a really fun family event for everybody. With the nice. right market, absolutely possible, Brian, for sure. Because a lot of people will be able to learn from one another's motorsports. You know, the yes. guys who are classics don't know about drifting, don't know about drag racing. And so if everybody comes together, no longer will there be ignorance. They're all going to be learning from each other and each other's, you know, different parts of the hobby. That's a really good idea. And it has happened in the past, as you know, with Noki Nationals being as big as it was. No classics in there, but there we, was- We spoke about this when we were out, remember? Yep, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, Motorama so here in Atlanta, Georgia, that annual show that's been like five years now in the making, that's starting to get bigger and it's Atlanta Motor Speedway and it's getting bigger and that's a big diverse crowd as well. You got the older crowd with the classic cars and you got the drifters, you got the new cars. So that's starting to become a little bit of a melting pot. But with a lot of marketing and enthusiasm, I think you can recreate the old days all day long. And right. the, one, the one thing that I really want to bring in is that um, you guys have all probably worked. Everyone on the screen has worked because we all work to try to get sponsorship to pay for our projects and stuff like that. One of the biggest things that we run into in the world that we're in, in drag racing is that if you go to Chevy, Chevy won't give you the money because unless it's all Chevys, they, it's, you know, they don't want to, they don't want a Chevy losing to a Ford. If it's Pro Charger, Pro Charger wants to be the only Pro Charger. They'd rather not compete against Ford Tech and Paxton. I've been doing this now. I'm, I've been 17 years old. You know, I'm 51 years old. I've gone to 22, uh, it would have been 22 SEMAs this year, you know, so 22 years of it. So I've, I've pitched them all and everyone comes back with the same feedback. And talking to Dan over at uh, Modern Hemi Shootout, he gets a really good backing from Dodge and Mopar. Does a great job. So what we want to do is we want to do kind of like War of the Worlds. We want to be able to take ZMAX, split it, Chevy, Ford, Mopar, Import. And each section, they all have their each section in that huge facility, even crossing over into the, you know, the, the circle, you know, the, the big track cross street where this festival goes on, where basically, you, you, as you say, the crossover, right? Well, you're not only crossing over to a different style of racing, but the Mopars have their deal. So you can concentrate. They have their one day of racing. But at the end, there's a major shootout. Let's say it's the all live four wide. You know, it's who's going to win. You know, I could hear you say, uh, okay. it's going to be Chevy, it's going to be the M4, it's going to be the M4. Yeah. You know, four if wide you had in each lane all going down at the same time. Would right? be the so, you know, basically, <laughs> yeah, it's just you build, you're building excitement. You get each brand involved. So they're, so they're attracting each one of their individuals. So, you know, you have the Holly, you know, Holly Ellis Fest or you have, uh, was it Super Chevy or Mopar Fest? So basically you have a little mini Mopar Fest and a, you know, Chevy there from here, but it's all on one time. So that you can, you, you can see the drama in the TV because, you know, they're yelling back and forth. So it makes good TV, but it also gives the ability that you have a very big platform as well for each one of the manufacturers, as well as the Midway, where every one of the manufacturers makes parts for each one, you know? So it's, it's one of those things. So that's the big master plan that we're working on right now. It's going to take a lot of moving pieces, but I'd like to invite every one of you guys, everybody that's been on here, you all want to come out, enjoy, and join in, have some fun, man. We're, we're going to try to put this together. If you could help out, bring your people in. We'll, you could shoot all the shows you want. You could come out, do whatever you want. We want to, it's just open to everybody. Just a huge, you know, festival of speed, we'll call it, you know? All right. Twenty minutes you want to get together and need help, I'm down, Brian. That's what I'm asking. Think about how Terry Coverman, I know Coverman's going to be up in the middle of that, right? Oh, think yeah. about yeah. All of this. He's going to be rolling around in there. <laughs> Take a Mustang. <laughs> Uh, in a quarter mile, it'll do a trap speed of 860, 870, but it'll do a, at 152 miles an hour. Whereas a Toyota Super will do it at 860 at 179 miles an hour. Do you look at that? When you look at them take off, the Mustang takes way off at the eighth mile. The Super comes, catches up, and beats it in the, at the end. And that's just a cool race to watch. And to see that in 4D would be really cool. Well, I was there. I was there when um, when I worked on Pink's All Out. I was the guy in the tower for the first ever four wide race in the world. So before the week the week before NHRA was in there, but they refused to run four wide. They all said, oh, it's an unfair advantage because the lanes and stuff. So the first time ZMAX had opened up and had a race for NHRA, and they ran in two lanes, and if something happened, they'd go in the other two. They would not run all four. We came in with things all out, and I met Brockmeyer out there on, I think it was Tuesday, and the, the actual, if you look at ZMAX now, it'll say one, two, three, four. It never did that until we got there. He was there programming that so you could have a one, two, and three, and one, two, three, and four winner. So I, I was actually the first one, our production team, 
had rental cars and we were testing the system out and I won all four races. So I win. Thank you very much. We were the first ones <laughs> to take the, the really true four wide. I, it was amazing to be there. So I'll never forget that walking out there, uh, uh, NHRA was out there and they had like 30,000 people. We walked out with Pink's All Out, the first four wide ever, and it was 33,000 people in the stands for one day race. And I walked out in the middle and I looked around and I go, what the hell did we do, you know? So it's like, <laughs> you know, it's like crack. You always chase that dream. I'll tell you right now, we need to have something like, it was amazing. Oh, no, Brian, you have to explain it to you. <laughs> 33,000 people for a, a Pink's All, and it was the most, we had a zip line camera that would do, I think it was 100 miles an hour. We were testing, I was up in the tower. We ran a zip line from the tower to the quarter mile, right to the to the actual uh, what do you call it, finish line, and we were practicing where the car would take off and then the zip line would catch at 100 and the car would take off. If you ever get a chance to watch that episode, it's pretty cool. That's a zip line. There wasn't. We were doing this so long. There wasn't anything called drones back then. You know what I mean? Yeah, right. You know, that's what the gray hair and all the shit from from doing this crap song. But you know, just imagine <laughs> that feeling though. Just having that ability to have all those guys on there. We'll live stream it. We'll put it on TV, and everybody gets a chance just to have some fun. And I tell you, I tell you, Sam and everybody, just imagine though, import, yeah, Chevy, Mopar, you know, just one that shot. Was awesome. I, I, yeah. They, as a matter of fact, if you look behind me, that poster is from Z Max that they did for us and, and framed them and sent us out to us. And it was amazing just to be part of that. And I tell you, it's like ch chasing that dream again. I literally, and just to get the grassroots racer on a stage that big, when those cars took off and it was, they were on the back bumpers, and there was a, it was like a rock concert. There was every flash went off in the world. So, and, the, and it finally, it truly meant that the grassroots racer had their stage. That was their moment, their defining moment. It wasn't an HRA. It wasn't top fuel. It was some guy with a car next door in his garage, some guy around the corner had a gas station, had a hot rod, and that night they were the stars. And I want to do that again. Absolutely. Nice. You're right. That is, sounds like a plan. Absolutely. Yeah, it's fun to do what we do now, but we just want, we want to take it to the next level. Uh, I just experienced to one we had back in the day. You know, the same, oh. the notes were really fun. From 2000 to 2008, it was like off the chain fun. The <laughs> spectators, the amount of people, the the, the a distance they would travel to be there. They would come as far as Washington State with their fixed up cars. Yeah. And we all went broke fixing up these cars, making them look the way they did. And uh, to see that come back would be absolutely awesome. We had, yeah. we had we have guys that have gone to, uh, went in the seasons, went 11. They have basically 11 stickers from going to the events. George Urbistello, they call him 10 times George. George yeah. made it to the final. Hey, hey, Terry, you know Georgie. George, George, George went, to, was, went to 11 of those shows. And uh, now he's with us on our show. So he's basically been to almost single, every single Pink's All Out, All Out Live, every event from there. It's fun, wow. though. It's a family fun event. No yeah. fighting. Everybody has a good time. We have barbecue contests out there. I mean, it's just people are just cooking. And at night, it's it's just off the chain fun, you know? Yep. Yeah. I remember. Yeah. I, I I like some serious sausage and pepper, man. I, was, I know that for a fact. <laughs> Oh, no, no, it's the king, the king of barbecue. <laughs> so, so, Brian, we haven't had you on our show yet, uh, Let's Roll Podcast, but were you the guy, one of the guys that started Pink Solo? This one? I, was, I started in, uh, I met Rich Christensen at SEMA back in 2004, I think uh -huh. it was, 2005. Um, and I was walking through, and him and Kale Christensen were sitting with a little, it was a VCR. Yes, it was a VCR. A VCR on a table with a, with a, with a what do you call it, regular TV set. And they were looping this pilot they had put together. And they, they stopped and said, hey, but, you know, I looked at it. Hey, you want to be on, would you, you know, would you race for titles? And I said, yeah. And they're like, really? I said, yeah, why not? So they gave me his card and never thought I'd hear anything back. And right around December of that year, he called me up and said, Will you still do the show? I said, sure. So I ended up being on the first ever, you know, let's say series deal, which was done in uh, Orlando. Um, I raced, uh, uh, had a Mustang race, a Chevy two. I won that. And then I ended up going on. They called me at the last minute for season two. Somebody had backed out in five days. I built a Camaro from a junkyard and finished it up on the show. All the cars we did, we 
we did it in less than, you know, it was, it was literally five days around the dyno with the car from a junkyard. All my guys worked 24 hours. It was fun. But, um, and at that point on, I stayed behind the scenes um, helping actually with the biggest problem they had with the original pinks was these guys would all say they'd do it, but they'd get there and none of the cars were ready. So my job was to actually finish their cars to get them on the show, to get them ready for the show because production, they were uh, speed at that point was paying, back then was paying about 50,000 an episode. So if we didn't get the episode, they lost it. So I had like the most, like one of the, I changed like one guy's valve body I was telling Sam about this. I'm, I'm swapping the valve body out in the car in MIR. I mean, fixing this other guy's nitrous kit. I'm popping this guy blue, some blue head gaskets. I'm rigging shit up and opening up the radio, emptying it out, putting a can on the thing just to get an episode. So it was funny. Then we went into the Pink's All Out deal, and I was just, uh, I was helping Nate behind the scenes with doing in the in last season, the last few episodes, doing all the casting. And then we ended up going out and did uh, Pink's All Out. And then I was out there, and Rich says, Come on out. And I was standing on the side. He said, Come on out. And after and those guys from Fox are like, what is he doing out there? You don't have a contract because I want him out on the show. And, he, and you know, you don't tell Rich what that, you know, when Rich tells you what to do, it's pretty much, all right, well, let him out there. And the next day I had a contract. And from that point on, I worked on the show for, you know, four seasons, five seasons, whatever from there. And uh, I took over when Nate went, I took over in the tower for, for a few seasons up there. And then. I, I did a, a live events with Rich Christensen called Arm Drop Live, which is the other poster on that side, which we did 27 live events I did with him directly in one year, 27 live events, uh -huh. Canada, Puerto Rico. And then we worked after Fox got, you know, if you guys know what happened, Fox, I mean, Speed, they turned Speed into FS1 and shelved all the original programming. Paying Saul out was one of them. And of course, uh, Pastime, Drag Race High and everything else went from there. I worked for three years um, back and forth with Fox trying to get the rights to the show. We got the rights to it in 2014 uh, for uh, 2013 or 14 for five years. Uh, I think it was five years we had it for. The biggest problem was uh, Speed Channel was still on internationally. So we were not allowed to, we, any, our contract was simply this. We can make things all outs, but if we made it, we had to give it to them. We did no money, nothing. We had to literally hand it to Fox, and they were going to put it on overseas. They were in Puerto Rico, Canada, and all over the place in Europe, and stuff was still going. They still had that going, and they wanted the content. So I'm like, every time we tried to get another network on there, they all wanted international rights because that's where they make their money. So we really couldn't get anything going. We went on, uh, we were on uh, Outdoor Network, and we did a, a couple trial deals out there, and we increased their viewership on a monday night for almost 70 or 80 percent so we thought we were good and then of course they turned around and said well all of our affiliate or our overseas, uh you know once want to know why they're, they're blacked out because they had bought another net another season of uh whatever duck dynasty and us and we blacked out internationally so they got pissed off and said unless you give us international rights we can't continue on so that's when i knew that it was time for me to do my own thing so uh, wow. Fox leads pinks, but they don't own all out. So I created all out live, um, and I utilized the last year of the contract to convert everything over from pinks all out to all out. And now we're yeah. going into season. Well, this is supposed to be season three. Uh, we got one, we got three episodes out before COVID hit, and we were supposed to be in Rock. Uh, uh, what do you call um, Goldport, Mississippi, for cruising the coast? We were doing an event at Goldport Dragway, and then the hurricane came in three weeks ago. <laughs> so it's, yeah, it, it's one of those years. <laughs> but we we don't plan on giving up. We're going to take it to the next level. We're uh, it's given us some time to regroup and really look back. As as you all know, it's a it's not an easy game we're in from there, especially when it comes to uh, support funding. We lost probably seventy five percent of our sponsorship after the first two months of the COVID hit from there. Yeah. So it was really a uh, really out of out of pocket for even trying to do anything this year. We're really lucky. I spoke to a couple of sponsors that are going to come on for next year, but we need some more. But we uh, we think that this plan that we're going to do with the bigger events, and then sticking to the schedule we're doing with uh, with West Virginia, we're doing a street deal and basically the same stuff. Teeing into large events like that, uh, you know, the, well, the cruise of the coast and the and the Woodward Dream Cruise is well, going to work. So. Jeff and I are going to have to get you on on a different show. We'll have to go talk, go over all this. 
because <laughs> yeah. I, I got I got other people waiting to come on, so right, I'm gonna have to move on. No problem, man. I I want to hear about it, but we got a lot of guests. <laughs> Forty good guests. Good so. you, Brian. It's good talking well, to you. The time. Mike, yeah, Jeff, Harry, hey, Brian. Lewis. Yeah, thanks a lot for coming on. No yeah. problem, Chris, Mike, Mark, David. You guys have a good night, Brian. We'll talk soon, okay? You got it. Yeah. Like said, everybody out there wants to join us this year, man. Just let me know. Hit me up. Uh, I will. Terry, everybody knows my, my, my phone number and my, my email address. So just hit me up. You guys want to jump in on board, man. We'll have a great event, okay? Yeah, sounds awesome. Thanks, guys. Right. Have a great one. Thank you. David Ankin. Hey, guys. How's everybody you're, doing? You're here. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah. Sorry, we, got, we went a little late, but uh, we had no. some people not figure out how to log in so it was, you know we're kind of making it all work you put 40 people on the air and think it's going to go smoothly can you <laughs> well you know I, I i knew we'd run into stuff so no it's all good how's everybody holding up sounds like everybody's at least uh holding up well and doing fine and building cars and and uh, appreciate you guys having us out yeah now uh what's new for you lately i know we had you on earlier this year me and jeff what do you yeah, got going you know, on now? we're blessed. We're blessed. We're a little bitty small town. You know, North Carolina is getting pummeled. Uh, you know, our governor is not real nice, but it doesn't slow us down. We're in a nice little town. We can't do a lot of filming, but we're building and having fun. And 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 I love the team we surround with. I love our industry. So anytime you can surround yourself with this industry and these people, how do you lose? I mean, it's a win-win for me as far as I'm concerned. So. Yeah, I love what we do. So have you had any of the hurricane blow-bys or anything happening out there? We're just far enough away from water that we, we end up just getting rain. I mean, it, it doesn't, we don't get any major, you know, you know, we get a little bit of wind, a little bit of rain, and we're fine here. It's in, in my shop, we got 10 acres up on a hill, so we don't get any water. We're, we're fine. We, you know, my downfall is I can't go rip the tires off it in the daytime sometimes because it's raining, but. The weather's yeah. really nice here in North Carolina for the most part. Now, you were talking when we had you on before, you had a little project that was going too. How's that coming? Is that Listen, still all, of them, all of them are amazing right now. I, I don't remember exactly where we were at last time we talked, but that the dragster we did, you know, the you know, man, it's 170 miles an hour in the eighth mile. I mean, it's fast. I mean, we run it on the street and I drive it to lunch. The car's been just <laughs> insane. Uh, right. Of course, the, the Willie's back out trying to do the digital series. So we're trying to get the digital because we, we've got a second show coming out of digital series, trying to get that up and going. But, you know, but COVID has really got us pinned down. So um, mm -hmm. we just we can't use tracks. We can't go out in public. And it's hard to talk to a camera with a, with a you know, I can film inside the shop, but you can't put together any type of real show for us. You know, I mean, right. if we were just building, it'd be different. But we're yeah. not well it's yeah. fun you know it's I, I love what we do if we're blessed right and you were were you still doing a dirt drag racing show is that still happening yeah, or is that, that what, just on hold yeah the digital series is definitely going to be based around street racing so it's it's really fun this whole first year all the scripts written everybody's done most of the cars are picked and built we even built cars just to get their butt whipped. So it's going to be a lot. I got a couple of cop cars we're building for plate police chases, and it's going to be a lot of fun. I'm excited. Okay, that's awesome. Yeah, looking forward to seeing what you come up with. <laughs> it's going to be a good time. So a lot of talent on the screen right there. Jeez. Yeah. Holy cow! Look holy at what we cow. got in here. Yeah. Well, we're gonna have to. Keep moving, but we're gonna have to get you back on once you uh, once your show is up and going. Or a, what network? Do you have any networks that's gonna be on? Or yeah, we're, just... we're still on the History Channel, so we we been there going into year four. So we're working hard on year four. I guess we're right dead in the middle of season four. So as soon as uh, they allow us to start filming, we'll finish season four and put it out, and hopefully get the digital series, the first episode of the digital series, out by the end of the year. So. It'll be okay. fun. Yeah, we'll have to we'll have to catch up with you. All right, guys, you guys be safe out there and uh, look, stay out of trouble. Yeah, you too. <laughs> All right, guys. Thanks, David. All right, uh, we got Dwayne here. Hey, Dwayne. Man, Dwayne Maddox. 
How are you feeling? How are you doing? Very Four good. Points. Very good. A lot better than expected. <laughs> That's awesome. Hey, it's my man. My man. Yeah, there he is, Iron Demon Ford. <laughs> That's We're happy it. Happy to see you, man. Happy to see Thank you. Thank you, guys. Hey, and since David just got off, yeah. uh, December 11th and 12th in Hickory, North Carolina, I'm going to do a show with David. And Jeff, yeah. if you can come out, we can do your uh, welding class there. We're going to have a augmented reality welder. Okay. Nice. And when is this? December 11th and 12th in Hickory, North Carolina. That's my birthday. I'm on my way. Come on out, brother. <laughs> You're welcome. Oh, what's up? <laughs> I that think, sounds uh, like something. I think we're in booth 205, if memory's right. Uh, and I can't remember the company with us. It's Pro something. David, help Pro me Fab. out. It's in Pro Fab. There Pro Fab Nation, they do, uh, I mean, some of the baddest exhaust on the planet. So they make their own tubing. So it's going to be fun. So nice. David's made a nice uh, display for this new augmented welder. Uh, it looks and feels like reality. So if you get a chance, man, come on out. That'd be awesome. There you go. There you go. Well, we yeah, miss SEMA. Did. We miss SEMA, but you still you still got a chance, Jeff. You keep saying that. We're missing SEMA. Or, hey, Mike, is SEMA happening this year? No. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, well, trust me, I, I feel that pain, too. Right? Yeah, yeah. Right? It. Yeah, it's killing me. Yeah. Well, anything else new for you? Are you back? Uh, are you still sitting at home? Are you going out doing I anything start, for Miller? I start work Monday. There you um, go. The last time I was on the show, I don't know if I said anything, but I now have a 63 C10 uh, that uh, someone else on the screen there, Lou Santiago, is helping me with. So there you go. hopefully Ooh. I'll have that going by next year. Yeah. Awesome. What's going in? <laughs> 383. Oh, old school. Love it. Yeah. Well, that's how Fairies, I like it. Man. I, I don't. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I don't want to soup it up and look different. I'd like it to look like it rolled off the assembly line, you know. Oh, really? Nice. Yeah. Just a little bit of extra performance. Come on, man. A little extra oomph to it, right? Come on. <laughs> of course, Terry, Terry wants me to put an LS in it, so. Uh, of course. <laughs> I think we should put a blown fuel uh, nitro power Hemi in it. 6,000 horsepower. <laughs> That's it. So I know you've got 40, 50 people waiting on here. I know. We I thank gotta... you for having me in this field of high cotton, all right? So... Yeah, we got a little <laughs> backlog here, so. <laughs> we got a yeah, field of high blame cotton. Terry. Blame Terry for that. <laughs> <laughs> and we got Sarah on, so we can't keep yeah. her waiting either. Man, we got people on here. It's great to see everyone, though. Uh, yeah. this is all right, guys. Hey, let's Thanks for taking the time, Dwayne. Glad you're feeling better, yeah. man. Take care. Yeah. Thank you. Yep. We'll see you later. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we got Lou, Lou Santiago and Tori, if he's still here. Yeah, I just saw Tori pop on. Yeah, Tori's on and off. There he is. Yes, Tori. <laughs> How's it going, guys? Good to see you. Lou's right hand man, Tori. We'll How be doing, here Lou? in a while. He's here. He's here. We don't have nice. a microphone on, I think. Let me check. Seems to be a little distracted. <laughs> Lunar computers don't really yeah. get along well, so. Uh... Don't tell anyone that. How's that? Is that uh, better? Hey, hey! Hey, Lou! There's Lou. How you doing, Lou? Hanging in there, man. I had the right, the wrong mic came on. I don't know. I don't know what mic was on, so I just had. To... Uh. <laughs> <laughs> How many mics you got? <laughs> oh, well, obviously, there's more than one because I the guess. one that was on. <laughs> The one it picked up wasn't working. <laughs> the first time I've seen you or Dwayne. talked to you in months. You're out of the shop finally. Yeah. yeah, I've been, um, I got, I think it's 25 episodes of Garage Insider TV up on YouTube right now. Nice. And the building I'm in just got put up for sale. So I'm shifting oh, no. gears and I'm moving stuff around. And uh, I got a 20 foot, I got a 20 foot shipping container up the driveway. At my sitting in my neighbor's yard. <laughs> oh, wow. So you just moved into that place, wasn't it? Late last year, you just moved in. Yeah. Yeah, I don't. You know, honestly, Jeff, I don't know what's going on. He sold. He sold the business that he owned for twenty years, 
and I'm in a different building and he's he's having a fire sale, man. His houses are up for sale, his buildings, the other buildings up for sale. I don't know what's going on, but I'm making I'm making plans as if I'm not going to be in there. So, I mean, I'm going to keep oh, wow. shooting as long as I can, but I need to be prepared to, you know, to bounce if I need to. Right. That's where I'm at. But I got Dwayne's truck, got a 383 for it. I just scored on a TKO that I got to rebuild. So I'm talking to Modern Driveline about possibly going out to Idaho or have Bruce from Modern Driveline come to me and we're going to do a video on rebuilding a TKO. So that way we'll be, we'll be ready to rock. Nice. So, so 